Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f*** up. This is Believe You Me on the Gas Digital Network. You're looking good. You're looking good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Believe You Me podcast episode, God knows what. UFC 272 review show. Uh, Anthony Smith and I were going back and forth with our cameras a moment ago. I'm still looking a little weird. You look damn near perfect, Anthony. I'm telling you, you don't need all the fancy cameras. You need a, <laughs> like a gaming computer and a ring light that makes you look a little tan. Logitech gaming software is the program I was just on. It's a Logitech camera, but I do have this big stupid light here that I use for my YouTube channel. But you can adjust the di- the brightness and whatnot. I mean, it's only mm-hmm. on eight. It goes to 100. But uh, <laughs> you, do you know what I mean? It's not yeah, on a lot. It's barely but on. the redness, I'm always red. And don't start saying it's because you fucking drink a lot. It's not because I drink a lot. It's because <laughs> this camera. Look, when I do this, it all changes. Anyway. anyway. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. How was your weekend, Anthony? It was good. It was busy. It was so busy. I mean, you know how it is. I think you probably did more than I did, but the the difference between working a pay-per-view and working a fight night is night and day when it comes to the workload. It's I feel like I did a hundred shows and then the sports center quick hits and it's just a bunch of sh- it's a bunch of shit. It's a lot of work. ESPN get you. They really mm-hmm. they get their money's worth as well, I'll tell you that. But I mean, of course, we love working for ESPN, the world's leader in sports, but they get their money's worth. But uh, uh, you know, you got to do this. You got to get up at six AM. You got to drive to LA, all that stuff. But still, it's uh, it's price you pay. You know, uh, it's where yeah. you get paid the big dollars, Anthony. Yeah, you know we're what still mean? We're getting checks and having I, not one time have we while we're doing this have I been punched in the face. So well, there you go. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. I tell you what is bad though. Uh, of course, we've all seen the news. It's Cain Velasquez. What happened last week? I could not believe it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned. A busy week. I had to go into Vegas on Wednesday, do fighter meetings because I got called in for commentary last minute again. And then I had to interview some people for BT Sport, Masvidal and Colby. We're going to get to that later. Then I had to fly to Rogan's Austin for the Rogan podcast on Thursday. Then I had to get back to the Wayne Show Friday, commentate. Yes, very, very busy. And uh, throughout that week, uh, yeah, just more things started un- unfolding about this Cain Velasquez case. It is it is fucking awful. I mean, Anthony, you've got what four daughters? Four daughters, yeah. And was it his daughter? Before I continue, I believe so. I, I don't think like publicly they're saying they're just been saying young relative, but I think it's yeah. because the child's a minor. And and but mm. from what I understand, you know, kind of in the in the in our circle, it sounds like it's his daughter. I mean, normally we like to start the show with a little bit of uh, upbeat, high. Uh, jovial hijinks, you know. Right. This is anything, anything but that. I am, it is not a laughing situation. It's fucking awful. It's terrible. Uh, I feel for him so badly. So obviously, I think I, I don't even want to say the words because Rogan was talking about this when I went on the podcast the other day, yeah. and I kind of clammed up. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like I, I don't it's even want to. Yeah, it's really uncomfortable. But I guess I saw today that he's been denied bail. I mean, listen, yeah. the guy apparently what was. Hundred times is what yeah, I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm hearing a, like a hundred different instances. Like, holy fuck! I mean, I, I, it's one of these situations where you got to kind of tiptoe around it a little bit because I don't want to be the person that says that I'm, I'm pro vigilante. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not all about. Uh, I'm. People shouldn't be taking the law into their own hands. But bro, you've got a shotgun in the back seat of your car. You're right. fucking using that. I swear to God, a hundred percent. I'm. T- I'm. I will. I will promise you that if, if I was in those shoes, I would have done the exact same thing. At least that's 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 my feeling about it. You know what I mean? It's. I don't think that people that do those kind of things should be allowed to live with the rest of us. Uh, there's, oh no no no! There's robbers. That's... There's 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 thieves and and all these other crimes that people commit. You can come back from that stuff. You can get a second chance. You can change your life around. You can't come back from that shit. So. Yeah. As a father, I, I can't imagine how helpless you would feel. No, like knowing that you took you took your child to this place every single day, and then that's where it happened, like at this daycare center or whatever. It's just 
it's got to be a helpless feeling and and i i feel so fucking bad for Cain velasquez and his family i i, I can't even put it into words how bad i mm. feel for him no no i know and the man well the man's just being a father i mean that's his duty as a father i would say mm-hmm. and i know that might shock some people but a hundred fucking times you find out about this and then he gets arrested. If, hope I'm not getting anything wrong here, but I believe he was taken into custody, but then he got bail a couple of days later. And then that's mm-hmm. when Kane fucking flipped arms, went chasing him down the freeway, I believe for 11 miles, taking shots. Sad thing was that he never hit the actual guy. He, um, he, uh, he, he hit the guy's father, you right. know, but. Which I'm sure is yeah. Kane feels bad about. Like, I'm sure that, that I mean, that's, oh, not yeah. his, that's not his goal, but what kind of fucked up world do we live in? Where that guy's walking the streets and Cain Velasquez isn't. This I mean, is what I'm talking about. I'm, it, not, it, I'm it, not saying Cain needs to be free. Like I'm positive that he went into that situation knowing, like I'm going to do this and I'm going to jail and I'm good with that. And that's I feel like that's how I would be. Like this is the consequence. You think he did? You think he did? You think he knew he was going to go to jail? Or well, I l- would think that he was going through a moment of temporary insanity. And Could one be. would say that that would be his defense as well. Because fuck me, you find that out. You are going to be temporarily insane. I mean, look for at sure. uh, there, there's uh, crimes of passion, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can get off of that. If you walk in and you find your wife or something with another man and you stab the guy or whatever, you know, you can say a crime of passion. I didn't know what I was doing. And that stands up in court. Sometimes right. I guess it has to be extreme. I would say this fits that. And I certainly would say it, it would make me temporarily insane. I mean, Jesus Christ. Rebecca brings the coffee in without sugar in it, and I'm fucking going out of my mind. <laughs> I catch fucking someone doing that. Do you know what I mean? Right. God knows what's going to happen. Well, and I think that I, I hope, I, I hope that that's the direction they go. I hope that his previous history of being just a good goddamn dude, I've never heard a bad thing about Cain Velasquez nope. ever. Nope. I've never heard one nope. negative thing about him. Every interaction I've had, although there's not that many, because he is very quiet, keeps to himself. He's not out and about. He's, you know, you don't see him a lot. They've all been positive. He's been nothing but a gentleman around me and to me. So that's got to help his case a little bit to, to know, like, this isn't the type of guy that just goes out popping shots at random people. This is an overwhelmingly no. different circumstance. So, but if that was me, uh, even if I w- knew exactly what I was doing, I'd probably be okay with it and just say, like, look, I'm going to go do this because this is what I have to do. And I'll, you know, I'll take my licks at the end of it, but I, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure he wasn't meaning to hit the wrong person, but I, fuck at that end. What do you, at that point, what do you do? Like the, the rage and the red that you would have to be seeing at that point. It's well, well, God I'm damn. sure, I'm sure he never set out that to, to shoot his, the guy's father. You know, exactly. I mean, that's just the way it fucking works. Apparently stepdad, and who knows, apparently stepdad owned the daycare place. Mm-hmm. And for this guy to be doing that, He's going to be fucked up in the head. So who knows? Maybe his father did it to him. I don't care. It doesn't make it right. It's not an excuse. I do not give a shit. That sucks for him. But you don't fucking do that to my daughter or family member, Mm -hmm. whatever it is. Uh, Definitely character references will be taken into consideration. But uh, we were just saying off air, somebody donated a million dollars to him to help defend his lawsuit. Harrington, is that correct? Show yourself under these dubious circumstances. Thank uh, God you dressed not like a pedophile, because sometimes you do dress like a pedophile. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be that would be you know un- uncouth for this episode to say. One hundred percent. This is a very depressing, but we got to talk about this. This is a big we story in yeah, the MMA world. One hundred percent. Of course. Uh, so the only facts I have so far is that the you know as you said the guy was given a zero dollar bail, allowed to walk the streets. The uh, I think a day after he got arrested. Yeah, Kane did the 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 chased him down. You nailed all that stuff. I think Brian was the one who had told us earlier that somebody had raised a million dollars. I know a lot of people popped up on social media over the weekend, uh, setting up GoFundMe's and links yep. and, and, you know, committing to match donations from followers, you know, for uh, uh, his mm. legal defense. Well, that says everything about his character that you need to know. You don't see, correct, you correct. Don't see people in this sport coming out of the woodwork to help anybody like, like that. I, I mm. think that says a lot about not only his character and how people feel about him and what they think about him, but I says I think that says just as much about how despicable the crime is. You know what I mean? About how, how people really feel about people that do that to kids and, and, and people that are, you know, can't protect themselves. Um, I, I just, I, I, th- I don't know why. I just feel like this is going to work out though. Is he going to do some time for sure? He's got a lot of yeah. charges on him right now. I, I know from experience and, and a lot of people around me that, Typically, when they tack a bunch of charges on one person, it's it's usually a good sign that the prosecutors are willing to to wheel and deal a little bit. Mm. 
you know, he has no, he, uh, from what I understand, he doesn't have really have a previous history. He's, he's a good dude. It was crazy circumstances. This isn't the type of dude this, that you have to worry about. He's not, even when they didn't, when they denied his bail, it said because of the overwhelming threat of him being free, it's just to one person. That's the thing. It's to one person. Yeah, correct. One correct. It's, and, and it, that, it, it, it's yeah. so weird to me that like they're making it like, you know, the judge kind of made it seem like, oh, he's this huge threat to society. He's not. He's a threat to well, one guy. Well, I, 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 I think when you look at those pictures of him when he's getting taken into custody and he's got yeah. like the, the prison stuff on and he's got the man, he looks like a bad guy out of fucking Batman or something. Do you know what he I mean? He looks like he belongs in jail. <laughs> yeah, no, he does. He looks like no if one's going to fuck with him. Yeah, if you don't no know No one's going to fuck with him in prison, that's for sure. When he gets in, he's having top bunk, bottom bunk, whichever mm. bunk he wants and he's going to have a nice little bitch. Listen, if he wants to go down that route, he's going to have no problem. <laughs> but, um, um, but, um, I am surprised that he got bailed. This guy, this piece of shit, this garbage human being, got bailed as quickly as he did, or you know, you know, was let out to walk the streets. Because, from my understanding, and I'm trying to steer a little bit away from what we're talking about here, mm-hmm. um, is that generally what I hear the, the penalties in the states are way tougher than the UK. Which, which some I like, some I don't like. You know, you hear about people bloody spending their life in prison for, uh, you know, minor drug offences and stuff like that. That's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. But I would have, because in the UK, there's, there's a lot of this, I say a lot of this shit. There's just as much shit as this goes on. But they don't get punished too much. You know, as you said, somebody like this, you don't get better. There should be mm-hmm. life in prison or round them all up, stick them on a fucking island. There you go, fend for mm-hmm. yourself. Because you're not coming back into our fucking society. Generally, I thought in the States, something like this, you are looking at a severely harsh sentencing. Mm-hmm. Brian, just um, quickly while Anthony chimes in, just look up average punishment or whatever for, I don't know. I don't even, I don't even want to say the words. I know. I don't, I, I, I don't think do, we do have not, to. Everyone knows what we're talking about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just look that up, Brian. See if you can find any information. It's a, it's a, it's a weird deal, man. Like, I sometimes you you see these these people and they just get off with like a, a slap on the wrist sometimes and then sometimes it, it's the punishments are insane and it, and who knows it was it's really early in both cases from what i understand like i don't think all that happened like even the like that initial piece of shit guy getting arrested but i don't think that was long before kane shot at him so mm. um i don't know I, I guess we gotta let the system play out but you know, I, I think the fact that this is getting so much public, publicity because of what Kane did, I think is only going to hurt that guy when it comes time to court for court. I just don't think how anybody, well, everyone's going to sympathize with him. It will hurt him. Go on, Brian. I can see you just dying to chime in there. This is not enough. It says there's a mandatory minimum of seven years, and I think it should be a mandatory minimum of a firing line. Yeah, no, it should be. It should be a man. That, yeah, no, it should be death. I have no problem if you, if they can one hundred percent prove it. You know, yeah. and that is the issue with the death penalty because sometimes, you know, you hear about innocent parties being executed and whatnot. Um, but if they can definitely prove it, that's it. Bullet in the fucking. I head. did buy a. Goodbye. I did buy a couple free cane shirts though. Oh, you did. Where 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 does yeah, one buy yeah. one? I'm I'm going to buy one uh, of those as well. Yeah, I bought three. Derek uh, Derek Brunson. On his on his website, it free cane. Someone. We will put yeah. the link in this episode's description. Good yeah. man, Perfect. Brian. Absolutely, yeah. already, the least I, we can I, do. If you go to Derek Brunson's Twitter, he's already cut like a, a pretty decent sized check to Kane's wife. It's like two days. He raised ten thousand dollars or something for. Oh, for was Kane's it family. was it Derek Brunson that put this together? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's off of his wow. own personal his own personal website. Yeah. Oh, that's it's, amazing! Uh, I didn't see yeah. that. So Shit, should have got Derek Brunson on. Cause that's yeah, amazing. I, yeah, shout out Derek Brunson. So I, he uh, it was he even got like the big you know the big huge cardboard checks or whatever, and he posted a picture of it. And he's kind of t- nice. he, at the very beginning he took some shit too because of course people come out of the woodwork like vigilanteism isn't the way and whatever. But he he doesn't give a shit. I, bro, and I love bro, it. Bro, bro, you anyone puts their hands on my child, I'm gonna turn into a vigilante. Good luck. And if yeah. you do that, and if you do that, if you do that heinous, disgusting, unthinkable, so bad that I don't even want to say it, crime. If you do that to one of my children, fucking get on your bike, son. You better run. You better. Right. And I'm not trying to sound tough, and you're the same way. And look mm-hmm. at Cain Velasquez. It's just insane. Harrington, what would you do? 
<laughs> oh, I mean, you know, I, I I think it goes without saying exactly, you know, what what Cain Velasquez was doing. I, you know, the only, you know, uh, advice I've heard or like thing I've heard that would have made sense would be to just run the car off the road so that he could have gotten his hands on him and beaten him to death. Like that. Yeah, the thing been. is, though, you're not thinking straight because I, I was saying this because uh, Rogan and I talked about this last week on the podcast. And I was saying to him then, I said, um, you know, it might hurt him that there's guns involved, you know, because they would say, well, you didn't need to take this route because you're a former UFC heavyweight champion of the world. You could have beat him up, but you chose to use a gun. Thing is, though, when you're that mad, when you hear about this and you own guns and you're legally allowed to have them and you've got one in your fucking hand, you damn sure better well guarantee I'm fucking using that because there's nothing nothing better for it. Why do I want to get my hands dirty? Uh, Harrington, you were going to say something. You chimed in for a reason. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm um, looking here. The charge that he was released, you know, with the zero dollar zero dollar bail for is one count of a felony. Uh, it's like a felony lewd and levacious uh, t- uh, act uh, of a uh, person under the age of 14. So that's one count. The minimum sentencing for that, if he is guilty, is only two and a half years. So the police right now are asking families to come forward because they do believe there are over a hundred counts of this, and they really want to throw the book at this guy. But they only have a, a, a you know just cause for for one case so far. Yeah, well, I would think if he did it to one person, and you're working at a daycare center, yeah. I hate to say, it, but that's the perfect environment for a horrible, disgusting predator like that. You know, they just has a nonstop flow of victims that he could abuse. So God knows how many times this piece of shit has been doing this. This is exactly why I've never done the daycare thing. Like people always, you know, my friends are like, man, you, you brought your mother-in-law to live with you guys for six years. This is why, because you don't ever fucking know. The world is a crazy place. Wait, your, your mother, you want to put your mother in daycare? No, no yeah, right. <laughs> no, my, I moved her in. I was like, I'm not putting my kids in daycare. I'm my mother-in-law lived here with me for yeah. six years for that reason. I have my in-laws here right now. They're floating about the house somewhere. Hopefully not for six years. <laughs> as, as much as I love them, they're great. They, they're visiting from Malaysia, I think, two months or so. Six years, uh, I think I'll go fucking live in Vegas. Uh, all right, all right, we'll move past that one. Recidivism. Do you know what that means? Recidivism. Recidivism. No. I just want to start with this. Uh, just get this. Recidivism, Brian, did you watch it? Did you watch it? Well, I, I know what the word means, but I also did watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when we, uh, I did the Rogan podcast last uh, Thursday, and when we were talking about this, and we were talking, saying, you know, people like that, it's, 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 uh, their brain is not wired right. This is what turns them on, and they're never going to get better. That's mm-hmm. why firing squad, stick them on an island, whatever. They can't blend into society. They will always be a, uh, a threat. And he said, Jamie, just pull up. What is the recidivism rate? I'm like, recidivism? What the fuck does that mean? He's like, you don't know what recidivism means? I'm like, I've never even heard the word. Apparently it means, you know, <laughs> being a repeat offender. It's the likelihood of repeating the offense. Yeah. Yeah, so there oh, okay. you go. I'm going to use that Mas- word. I'm going to, uh, uh, that's going right for, into my vocabulary. Vocabulary lessons with Bisping. Uh, right. All right. All right, should we move on and get away from that? All right, I want to tell you about our newest sponsor, guys. I am very happy and proud to tell you about Chicken Skin Snacks. Listen, Chicken Skin Snacks is an excellent way to satisfy your crunch snack craving and is a perfect alternative to carb-heavy snacks such as chips and popcorn because they have zero carbs per serving. Yes, you heard that right. Bow, 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 bow. Zero carbs per serving. You eat a bag of chips. Who doesn't like a bag of chips? But the problem is they're not good for you. You're going to get fat lots of carbs there's lots of fat lots of god knows what chemicals i'll say chicken skin zero carbs fat chicken skin is currently offering eight different flavors we got the original we got the salt and vinegar the buffalo wing that's a good one the chili lime thai flavor my personal favorite salt and pepper jam can jerk right about now we got the clucking hot and of course come on you can't have chicken skin if you haven't got a cheese, you can enjoy chicken skin as a snack on its own, a salad topper, or even as nachos if you really want to pig out with chicken. C-H-I-C-K-N-S-K-I-N.com. Chicken skin snacks. You get it? C-H-I-C-K-N-S-K-I-N.com. Chickenskin.com. Use the promo code BELIEVE20 if you want 20% off your order. That is BELIEVE20 for 20% off your order. You're going to love them. Enjoy. I'll tell you yeah. what, we're going to go from one disgusting sexually related topic to another. I can't believe this is in the notes, but only because we need something stupid now to lighten the mood. 
I'm going to allow it, Harrington. Please, you know what I'm referring to. Show yourself. Shame on you. Where's the shame bell? Oh, I'll find it for the next episode. I have a shame I'll bell. I'll put Harrington. it in a post. Yeah, yeah, bing, 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 bing. Mm -hmm. What is this story, Harrington? What are you talking about? Explain see? to Anthony. Did you see it in the notes, Anthony? No, I, I, I read most of the notes. I think I got to the end and then jumped on, so I must have missed them. What's yeah, this? Go one? ahead. Number four in the non-MMA. Uh, so there's a company. Uh, I guess they're just trying to get Oh, my God, I did here. see this. Okay, yeah, 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 so never mind. Company, I got you now. <laughs> Strip Chat, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're a porn <laughs> company, and they're saying, like, look, you guys are going to be working on porn all day long. You know, like there should be a place where you can go and relieve yourself to, to you know, ease the stress and pressure of the workday. So they've set up four masturbation pods uh, equipped with, you know, VR Oculus headset, a 4K LED screen, lube and tissues. You know, I mean, talk about a nice uh, three in the afternoon break. All right. The real question is, is how much does the motherfucker who cleans that place get paid? <laughs> That's well, a it's setup. Like, uh, that's a setup. They got VR headsets, HD, oh, yeah. 4K I, I've, I've, I've never. I've, are you aware of virtual reality porn? No, no. Oh, the guy that I used to do this with, Lewis. He he's all about it. Brian, are you, have you gone down this disgusting little rabbit hole? No, no, Mike. I either touch a lady or I don't. Oh, <laughs> Harrington, I damn sure guarantee you have. Uh, so my, I moved in, <laughs> when my girlfriend moved in, she brought her Oculus, and literally the first day I was home alone in the house, the first thing that I did was try that. That's, um... <laughs> I just, I got you, shit to do. You, what do you <laughs> do? Time. What do you... Uh, I, we just got the Oculus, too, as well. Have you tried the Oculus, by the way? Anthony? Yeah, I, yeah, I got one. My kids love it. It's fucking amazing. Well, well isn't yeah, he pretty amazing. soon? You're gonna love it, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But imagine, like, so, I, so what do you do? Are you thrusting? Are you gyrating? I mean, talk me through the experience. Well, I mean, you could. You could use, you know, there, there's a number of different toys that have, that have uh, you know, sponsored this show at different points. But, yeah, I mean, there's different things you can do. But, I mean, for the most part, honestly, yeah, it's like, you know, it's like regular porn, but you have, like, a 360 thing, and it looks like the girl is, like, right there in front of you. It's pretty great. Right, right. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> listen, I like to You can look it. down at some other dude's junk. Well, <laughs> you try to keep your eye line up. You know, I make you so anyway, about so, so, so we're trying to do like a hard hitting MMA show here with a bit of fun and games. And that's what Harrington puts in the notes, <laughs> puts in the goddamn notes. I'm like, Harrington, come on, buddy. But it is pretty funny. Would you work there, Anthony, if uh, the fighting thing doesn't work out? In. I already put the application <laughs> in. I'm just waiting to hear back. They got my resume. So what was the story, Harrington, then? What, yeah. what is it doing in the notes? What, no. what is this actual story with it? Just that, you know, this is a, a forward-thinking company, and I'm wondering if you think more companies are going to take this uh, initiative. And, you know, I'd like to see the kind of output that, that they're having, you know, the, the, the overall morale of the company. I want to see what this does over the course of six months. So you say, excuse me, boss. I'm just going to go to the jerk-off room. It's going to release <laughs> some tension. I'll be back. Give me, give me 10 minutes. I'll be good. Look, all I'm going to say is we had the COVID pandemic. Everybody started working from home. All of a sudden, stock prices going through the moon. Productivity in America went up as soon as you could jerk off at 2 p.m. at work. Yeah, but you need a nap after that. You're not going to do that and then get straight back into work because that is nap time. I'll tell you the truth. Anytime I'm sitting at a cubicle, I'm doing maybe an hour's worth of work over all eight. So if you get four good hours out of me in a two-hour jerk nap, that's fine. I have never been happier to do this via Zoom, so I don't have to see Harrington, so I don't have to touch Harrington, we don't have to shake hands, because God knows where he's been. Um, should we get into some of this MMA but stuff? now I know why it takes him so long to get shit done. Yes, exactly, exactly. All right. Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal went down on Saturday night. It wasn't the most exciting affair. It was a fun fight card. It was nice to be there. It was fun to call the fights once again. You were there as well, working for ESPN. I'll let you take the lead on this one. Anthony, Masvidal, Covington, what were your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I got, I got God again. I, I, I picked Masvidal because um, I, thought, I thought maybe he, like, he knows Colby. He knows his pace. He knows his output. He knows what he feels like when he gets on top. And he still was talking about knocking him out. And, you know, so I thought, well, he seems pretty confident he's going to be able to get up off, his, off the ground. He did a really good job getting off the mat with uh, Usman in the first fight. Um, mm -hmm. And Usman's more of a control guy typically than Colby is. So I thought, well, maybe he'll just, you know, like he's going to get taken down. He's going to get taken down a lot. But I, I think he can work back to his feet and he, he can land a big shot and, and Colby might walk into something. And then 
the fight goes the way that it goes. I think in that first round, I think he realized this is a lot harder to get up than I thought it was going to be. So it changed the way he struck from then on. He was he, he didn't want to push forward. But he was back and straight to the fence. He wasn't holding the center. All of those things are bad when you're fighting wrestlers, right? So mm-hmm. then I went back and I started watching his interviews again last night, like wondering, like, what did I miss? Like, because uh, I just didn't see it. I didn't see his. He just looked mentally defeated halfway through. So, but then I watched his sit down with you on BT Sport. And I watched it last night. I was laying in bed and I was like, that's what I missed. Like that, that genuine anger and rage that he was holding in. Like when you, when at the very end, you know, you guys started talking about uh, his daughter has a phone and she's calling him. Mm-hmm. And, hey, didn't this guy used to live with you? Like, he let it out. That was, I think the entire week, that was the one time he kind of let it slip a little bit where, you know, he had to back it up. He started rubbing his thighs with his hands. Like he, he yeah. you could tell like there was fucking real rage there. And I, I just, I, I just want to next... interject real quick and just say to everybody, this is the level of in-depth analysis that Anthony Smith does. He, <laughs> after the fight, he's going back and watching interviews from last week. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. Your commitment to this show, Anthony, is, <laughs> is unparalleled. Well, I, I just, I don't know. I could, I could tell all week that there was something off, but I thought it was just like that. It was a big fight. It was, you know, he, Mm. he's, he hates him or whatever, but there was something off all week and I couldn't put my finger on it. But so I, I didn't even talk about it on the post show. I was like, or the pre-show all week long. I didn't talk about it because I couldn't really figure out what it was, but I figured it out kind of afterwards after seeing him fight. Like, I think he's, I think he was, he talked about being flat. I think he was so mentally and emotionally exhausted from his just, absolute hate and rage mm. uh, you know to just to the viewers and the listeners that that kind of anger and hate e- even if you're holding it in and you're not letting it come out in your fight style that's so much stress and it's so much just just that it's it's exhausting it's mentally and emotionally exhausting and and that's always going to kind of transfer to your fight style and, and and to your i don't know to your own conditioning so i i, I just think it was i think he hated him too too much I, I think yeah, I, I I think that is partly true. I mean, it is true, partly because of the reason. But, you know, when you train with someone for that amount of time, and Jorge did talk about this in that sit down. He said, listen, when I was at 155, he did used to control me because I was way smaller. At 170, I would do better. Point of me mentioning that is that that kind of alludes to already that what he's saying is that if you read between the lines is that he would get dominated in, in the dominated in the wrestling department by Covington, which is fine because Masvidal isn't a lifelong wrestler, but he can scramble. He has got a good takedown defense. He can get back to his feet. So maybe he was going to be able to use those kind of abilities to stay on the feet or get back to the feet and make it exciting. To be honest, um, and I want to be respectful, but. His energy looked off all week, Mm -hmm. I thought. I thought, you know, and who knows? Maybe he was just playing it calm. Maybe he was holding on to his emotions. Maybe he didn't want to reveal too much, whatever. But he didn't, he wasn't the same Masvidal, I thought. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm misreading it. No, no, I read uh, read the same thing. Yeah, I remember thinking he doesn't seem like the same guy. Even at the press conference when Colby was screaming his fucking head off and getting in his face and talking all kinds of crazy shit once again. Yeah, he was firing back, but it wasn't the same guy that, that that we all know and we've all come to love. You know, we all come to admire, you know, his work. You know, Masvidal's a real one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he seemed to be holding back a little bit, but maybe he was like, shit, this he knows he's in for a tough fight, which of course, of course he did. It was always going to be a tough fight. Um, I give him credit for not getting submitted. You know, I give him credit for not getting finished. Um, yes, he landed that good shot in the fourth round. But other than that, it was kind of a shutout. You know what I mean? And I'm a fan mm-hmm. of Masvidal. I love yeah, watching me him too. fight. I'd rather watch that uh, Masvidal fight his fight than watch Colby fight his fight. You know, what I mean? and that's just me as a fan that prefers striking and a little bit more exciting. Hey, sh- fair play to Colby. He did what he had to do to win the fight. That was the smart way to win. Take him down, push him back. I think when Masvidal watches it back, he'll be annoyed. There's one thing I would have said if I was in his corner was he's backing up too much. Masvidal was backing up to the fence. You back Straight up to the, the fence. fence that's what Colby wants you. He's going to shoot, you know, and then you got that whole thing. You get the hands together. You put him fucking down. Away you go. Earlier in the night, Yan Zhaonan versus uh, uh, Rodriguez, Marina Rodriguez, the fucking circular movement of uh, Yan Zhaonan was amazing. That's what Masvidal needed. If he had more circular movement, kept away from the fence, 
might have had yeah. more success. Dude, I'm, as soon as Masvidal started willingly giving up the center of the octagon and backing straight to the fence, you know, I, I kind of knew that that was it there. Like, that's the one of that's you can't do that. You can't let that happen with a guy like Colby Covington. Um, just before I forget, I'm not trying to boost your ego, your ego or anything, but your interview with Colby was, was that might have been the only one I've ever enjoyed. I, I feel like we got a little more real out of Colby in that one. Only one of my interviews you've ever enjoyed? No, the only one of Colby's. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. So, no. um, that's half said, for the yeah, audience what, to clarify. <laughs> yeah, I should have said, oh, yeah, no, that's what I meant. No. First um, episode, you come and you're like, Mike, I had to take the fucking headphones off and say, this bin's out of his mind. I could have listened to his commentary. Now you're like, oh, it's the only one I've ever enjoyed of this big interviews. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm give me a fucking break. <laughs> no, I, normally I can't stand listening to Colby talk. Because it just seems so scripted and so fake, and and it, it, yep. you know, we've had other guys that do that, like Connor at the beginning. At least he was, he was quick witted and funny with it too. Um, Chael for sure. Chael, yeah. Chael's were were super corny, but it was it was funny. Like there was a little bit tongue in cheek there sometimes. He we delivered like, it with it with, with yeah with tongue in cheek with yeah. a pinch of salt. You know, he's just playing the character, and you knew that. Right, but it, but Colby, you're like, God damn, dude, like you're going too far here. But at least when you guys were doing it, like you, 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 I, I liked how you kind of held his feet to the fire on the, the wife and the kids and, and mm-hmm. like you brought it up to him and made him respond to you instead of, you know, letting him kind of pass that by. I don't agree with his logic and his reasoning for doing it, but it, it seemed like that was a, he genuinely believed it. Like, this mm-hmm. is why I'm doing this. And, and like he, in his head, he justified like, okay. At least he believes it. Like he's not just doing this to to be an asshole, or or I mean, he's absolutely doing it to be an asshole. But he's not just making shit up. Like whatever story he has, he believes that shit. And then the gym mm. situation seemed a little clear when he talked about it. I'm not, you know, I don't know who's right and who's wrong, but at least you kind of held him to the fire a little bit and forced him to explain it in a way that was more, it was better than just the sound bites and the screaming at a press conference and it's on Twitter yeah. and shit. Like okay. Like, I don't necessarily hate this. I don't hate listening to you talk right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well, thank you very much. He, he was very generous, to be honest, and so was Masvidal. But so the fight, a clear shot out, you know. I knew they wouldn't be friends afterwards. Rogan still owes me $20. We had a little bet on, on air about that. Uh, he said, oh, they'll be fine afterwards. I'm like, I don't know. I spoke to them this week. Uh, and clearly, they, they were still talking shit in the octagon, even as... You know, they were saying who the winner was and stuff like that. So I don't think they're ever going to be friends again. But it does beg the question, Mr. Anthony Smith, who do they fight next? Because I saw Dana come out at the press conference and said, listen, if, if Colby is the next best guy, then maybe he gets the third crack at Kamara Usman. And I understand that logic, but I also don't understand it whatsoever. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I'm far be it from me to go against Dana White. It's his company, he can do whatever he wants. And fucking I just go to where I'm told and fucking commentate and whatnot. So, you know, I don't make those matches. But I I think Colby needs to, because he's number, he's the number two welterweight on the planet. But the right. people that he's beaten leading up to that, yeah, he beat, he lost to Kamaru. There's no shame. He beat Masvidal. But Masvidal was coming off two losses. He was just knocked out. And then the fights before that, there was Tyron Woodley, you know, who was far from his prime with respect right. to Tyron. Who else? Who were some of the other ones? Dos Anjos, who was a lightweight, who was fighting at welterweight. There was Robbie Lawler. I know I'm not getting these in the correct order of when he last fought them, but these right. are like some of the last few people that he fought. You know, I would like to see him fight some of those other big fucking names at 170. There's Vincente Luque. There's uh, uh, there's Hamza. There's Gilbert Burns. Yes, they're fighting. Who else is there? There's tremendous Leon Edwards. I mean, he should mm-hmm. be fighting Usman. I don't know if that's going to go ahead. There's lots of other people for Colby Covington to fight that I'm actually really interested in those matchups rather than getting another stab at Kamaru pretty soon. Yeah, well, and, you know, he's talking about Dustin Poirier, which, again, is... It, again! Yeah, th- th- I missed that one. That's a fucking yeah. lightweight. Yeah, he's, it, and he's chasing pay-per-view dollars. You know what I mean? Like, he's chasing big fights and, and big names, but I, he's, got, he's absolutely going to need a fight or two before he's going to get back to Usman. I just, they're not going to give that to him right away, but... no. I, I like the winner of Gilbert Burns and Shemaev. I think that I think we get to you. You can kind of kill two birds with one stone there. If if Shemaev gets through Gilbert Burns, absolutely tells me that he's the real deal. Like 
there's still still a couple questions. He hasn't beaten anybody in, in the top in the top ten. It, he's done. He's looked goddamn fantastic, but he's he you know he he just doesn't have that really nice name. I think that everyone's looking for. Um, if he beats Gilbert Burns, I think that's good enough. That's good enough to get him in there with like a number one contender fight or something like that. So yeah. Um, and then that solves the question with Colby because then if he beats Gilbert Burns and then Colby can beat him, then I think you get a lot of people to shut up about him getting a third fight. I, I, I started laughing then when he said uh, Hamza because I was with him Friday and Saturday night. Uh, him and Darren Till, they, they have become like best buddies. They're the new Colby that. and Jorge in the making. <laughs> Them two against the world, right? <laughs> uh, and, and and now they're uh, with Block Asset, a uh, company that uh, I'm involved with and Darren's involved with. They're all down in Las Vegas right now because Hamza's fighting Gilbert Burns, UFC 274, I believe that, April mm-hmm. 9th, I want right. to say. Um, so, so they've rented a house and they're living down there and Darren's training with Hamza and he said Hamza's really inspiring him just seeing the way he trains his work ethic and his approach to the sport uh, so they're all down there so I Friday night I meet up with them all Darren Ilya Latifi uh, in fact there's a picture on my Instagram if you want to bring it up Brian the block has it guys Ilya Latifi Darren and Hamza and myself and we have a lovely dinner and by the way, I want to say a shout out to Richard Wilkes from, uh, he's the hospitality host or the host or the manager or some shit at uh, Barry's Prime One Steakhouse in Vegas because the bill was very expensive and he comped it, gave it his all for free. So thank you, Richard. Wow. Anyway, point of the story was, uh, oh, look, there we are. There we are. Oh, there we go. Right, so that, there's us enjoying a nice steak, which turned out to be free. So that's always better. Uh, but anyway, point of the story is we get out, we, we're at Valet. Right, they've rented a BMW while they're here. So we get in the car, Hamza's driving. Now I don't know if he has the driving license or not. And I don't know how tough it is to get a driving license in Chechnya because the motherfucker is out of his mind behind the wheel of a car. He is driving like a psychopath. And him and Darren are in the front. Darren's 28. I think Hamza's 25 or 26. Mm-hmm. Younger guys, right? Maybe when I was younger, I would have thought it was hilarious as well. But I'm 43 in the back with three kids and a wife, you know, that I want to get back to. And I'm like, fuck, get my seatbelt on. Hamza's whoo, he's driving like a nutter. He's going down the wrong side of the road. I'm like, Hamza, you're on the wrong side of the road. He's like, brother, brother, it's no problem. It's good. And I'm I'm like shit in my pants. Darren thinks it's fucking hilarious. So Hamza's <laughs> going even faster. And he's purposely going down the fucking wrong side of the road, dodging cars and stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was, I was terrified. I thought we were going to die. So we stop at a gas station. Right, and I come out. I run in to grab something, and I walk out. Fucking Darren's in the driver's seat now. They're doing fucking huge donuts on the fucking <laughs> on, by the gas station. I'm like, what the fuck? Hamza gets in the car. He starts doing donuts with me in the car. He must have missed one of the fuel pumps by about this much. You know what I mean? Then we pulled oh, up at God. the uh, at the residence in, and he fucking drove up to the lobby again. Foot down, yeah. And then and then I got messages of Darren taking the piss out of me, making fun of me because, yeah, I was being a little bitch in the back, but I don't want to die. And those no. guys are fucking crazy. Yeah, that. I wish I was there. I feel like we yeah, just could have kept switching drivers <laughs> and just scaring the shit. Michael Bisming would have had a goddamn heart attack. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Did you know how to do a donut? Oh, yeah. I've never done a donut in my life. Well, the, you know what? We're going to have to change that. At 43 years old, and I've never done a donut. And when I was on the Ultimate Fighter season 14, we had a rental car on there, and I would pull up and I would drive down. There was like a big turning circle at the bottom. I'd always put the handbrake on and pull up like that because it wasn't my car. But that just shows 10 years ago, things have changed. But these days, I'm a pussy. Anyway, uh, yeah, Hamza versus Burns, the winner of that for Kobe Coverton. There we go. Yeah. All right, guys, I want to tell you about Manscaped and the Manscaped 4.0. You've heard us talk about this for a long, long time. Well, that's because Manscaped is the real deal. It is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. Listen, you know the deal, right? You got to trim your junk. You got to trim your balls. You got to trim the PP and the testicles. And a lot of the time when you do that, you're going to cut yourself. Well, that is a thing of the past right now because Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever known to man. And they have come up with the lawnmower 4.0. Not the most uh, original name. They had a 3.0, 2.0, but I guess it works. Listen, this thing is waterproof. You can take it into the shower. 
It has an LED light. You can cut your balls in the dark. They've upgraded the motor to a 7,000 RPM with quiet stroke technology. Listen, if you're sitting here right now and you're looking down at your penis and you're like, this is disgusting. I need to get this into shape. Okay. Don't take it to the gym. Go to manscaped.com and use the code BISPING20. You're going to get 20% off and free shipping. Your balls will thank you. You will thank you. Your partner will thank you. And if you're ever seen naked in a shower at a 24 hour fitness, wandering around like an old man with your balls hanging out, whoever walks by, they will thank you as well. Manscaped.com. Code is BISPING20 for 20% off and free shipping. Jorge Rivera. Jorge Rivera. Jorge Masvidal. Oh, your best friend. <laughs> Whoa. Jorge Masvidal. What do we do with him? Um, he just signed, by all accounts, he's going to be top three, you know, third highest paid fighter on the UFC roster now. Yeah. So who would that be behind? I mean, I don't know. Obviously behind Connor. Who's number two? Somebody signed. Oh, Izzy, Izzy. recently signed, said he yeah, was the second Izzy. highest. So, wow. So, Masvidal, fair play to his management. They've done a great job. And Masvidal is a star, uh, but he needs a win. But because he's on that kind of contract, it's going to be a hard good fights fight. And, yeah, hard fights and big names. Has Main to events be. events and high pressure. That's for sure. Has to be. Has to be. Who do you think's next? Man. I don't know. I think uh, it depends on who some of these other guys fight. Like, what is Connor going to do when he comes back? I think that matters. Fight um, for the belt. That's crazy. That's what Dana's saying. I know. I, yeah, I hear it. That's just crazy. I, mean, I, I want to get into this. I want to get into this, but we're flip flopping, we're piggybacking, we're, we're jumping all over the topics. We don't I know give it. a fuck. Go on, Harrington. What do you want? Now he said he's going to fight for a belt. Could it be the BMF title? But, but that should be. Masvidal kicks the shit out of Connor. The Masvidal Saturday night? I don't know. The Masvidal yeah, against Nate Diaz. Just, yeah. I was just going to say the same thing. The, the, the one that fought Nate Diaz, probably. The one that fought Colby Covington two nights ago, not a chance. Yeah. It's just, again, on Rogan's podcast. depends on who shows up. Well, no, exactly. And to be fair, it sounds like we're taking away from Covington there because people that don't know it say, well, hold on. The reason he didn't fight well is because Covington took the mm -hmm. fight out of him and just controlled him. And that is true. That is true. But again, he just he looked a little off. And maybe mm -hmm. that was because his last fight he got knocked out cold. I know that I don't say that disrespectfully. It's just that is a real factor to consider. And then you're going to get somebody that you knew, that you have history with, that maybe deep down in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, God, this guy can out wrestle me. And that makes you hesitant. Have you ever mm -hmm. been in that situation? Yeah. Yeah. I fought uh, not, not with a friend or anybody that I knew really well, but I've been in fights where I, I got a really good wrestler or, you know, the Andrew Sanchez fight, I was super hesitant the first couple of rounds and it got to the point where I, there's a minute left in the fight and I got to go or, or he's going to beat me and, you know, I'm going to lose this decision. And then, you know, I had a very similar situation in the Cesar Fajaya fight, just got out wrestled right. and, it, and it just changes the way that you strike. You, you don't want to push forward because it helps them take, you know, that helps them with the takedowns. You walking right onto them, can't back up because then you're going to end up in the fence. You can't throw big because they're going to duck under. You can't, like, wrestling. It's such a, a mind fuck. It's a motherfucker. It is. It is. Like, when I fought Tim Kennedy, you know what I mean? I, I'd mm -hmm. been out for a long, long time with my eye. It was my first fight back. I rushed back. I shouldn't have done it. I'm making excuses. He beat me fair and square. He out wrestled me. But it was that thing, everything you just spoke about. Uh, I've talked about this at length on the podcast, so I don't want to bore people to death. Masvidal, Connor wouldn't be a bad one. That would be a fun fight, and it would tick all the boxes that uh, yeah. the UFC want to tick in terms it's of big. money. That's big. Yeah. What about you know? I and, said this. I said this earlier. Connor wants to fight at one seventy as well. Yeah. Yeah. What about what about one of the Diaz brothers? Well, it should be Nate Diaz. That should be the fight. That's right I think, there. The I think one Nick on one would be bigger. Well, he well, would be bigger in I, terms of weight. Yeah. Yeah. No oh, shit. Especially yeah, recently. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, just, I don't know. I think last there's... fight, do you want to see him fight again? I know. If, I don't know if I if do he, want to see Nick Diaz fight. If he fight. wants to fight, that's the problem. Yeah. Because I didn't feel like the Nick Diaz we watched fight wanted to be there. Now, if Nick wants to fight, that's a that's a fight that I would want to watch. So maybe there's too many contingencies on that one. Too many unknowns. Yeah. Nate, Nate Diaz is going to bring it. You know that's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like Nate, you, you know he's going to show up. Nate's always going to bring it. And if Nick Diaz wants to fight, I'll always watch. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. um, regarding Connor, you know, there, there was a story because I said mm -hmm. that, you know, 
Maybe he comes back and fights Charles Oliveira. And maybe he beats him. And I'm getting fucking flamed online now. But I'm like, hold on, dickheads. I said more than likely he wouldn't. But there is a chance. Because for Conor coming back, after all the time he's been away, it'll be about a year, maybe longer by the time he does come back. Um, he's not going to be, he's not going to fight his way to a title shot. No disrespect. There's too many wrestlers. There's just engaging. There's Islam Makhachev. There's bloody Michael Chandler. You know, a lot of wrestlers, a lot of guys that fucking hit hard and can take a punch. Charles Oliveira, out of all of them stylistically, and I'm not disrespecting the champ, could be, you know, his best chance of victory. And he gets a, to win the belt. I mean, because if you're the UFC, the amount of money he generates, you want him as the champion. You just do. And if he fights Charles Oliveira, Charles, whilst being tough as fuck, and he has come back from the Chandler fight and the Dustin Poirier fight when it wasn't going well, but he is hittable. He does get mm -hmm. caught a lot. And if Connor's still got that powerful left hand, and it seems to have diminished a little bit, but still, you know what I mean? I'm not saying he would, but it wouldn't be the craziest thing if Connor came back and he gets a shot against Charles and knocks him out or TKOs him. Right. What? Well I'm going to catch a lot of shit for this statement. I'm about to. No, no, I, 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 before you do, I ain't no kind of fucking nut hugger. Everybody right. knows that. Everyone knows that. But if you look at the facts, you look at what he can do, you know? Yes, he's diminished. He's not as good. But Charles also gets hit. So I'm not yeah. saying he beats him. I'm just saying it's easier than his. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be right along there with you getting flamed, probably. I, someone asked me a question. Someone, someone close to me. It was like a, like a friend. I, don't, I wish I remember who it was, but. They said, out of the top 15, how many, how many guaranteed wins do you think are there for Connor? As, as guaranteed as you can get in the fight game. Out of the top 15, how many guaranteed wins are there? And then how many maybes? And so I went through the, I went through the rankings. Charles Oliveira was a maybe. I was like, yeah, you know, if he, can, if he can stay at distance long enough, laying a big shot early before he's kind of fatigued or anything like that, there's a, there's, it's a, there's, it's more a, of a maybe not. It's more of a maybe yeah, not. But, yeah, but you've got to get you, but you've got to give him his respect. Continue. Right. Yeah, I, I, I have a lot of respect for Connor's power and his ability to find shots. So, like you said, it's probably a maybe not, but it's in that maybe area. Mm -hmm. And I was only like two or three, like two guarantees in the whole top fifteen. I mean, maybe three. So, like, I don't think it's crazy what Benil you're saying. Neil Dariush, no. No. Islam Makachev? No. Dan, uh, sorry, uh, Michael Chandler? No. Justin Gagey? No. I'm running out of names. Dan Hooker? <laughs> Dan, Dan Hooker would be a good one. Dan, Dan Hooker would be a Dan good Hooker stylistic of, matchup. Yeah, that's a good stylistic matchup. That's Tony Ferguson was the other one. Tony Ferguson would be a fantastic matchup for him. Another guy that's very easy to hit. Right. That relies on his durability. Right, Dan, Dan Hooker kind of relies on his, and I'm a big Dan Hooker fan, so I hope he, I don't want him to take that negatively. Yeah, he, yeah. He, stylistically, the way that he fights versus how Connor fights very much kind of rolls right into Connor's wheelhouse. Um, same with Tony Ferguson. I think there might have been one other one, like like down real low, like 14 or 15. Um, and I think it was only a yes because I didn't know who it was. <laughs> to be very, yeah. very honest. With yeah, you. yeah, so yeah. I no, just, no. But, it, listen. So your point. I do think Oliveira is one of the it's it's the best matchup in the top five for Connor. Well, it's it's the best matchup with the most to gain. You know what I mean? 100%, and yeah. and and Dana, I forget the exact quote. Maybe Harrington, you have it because you're a nerd like that. But I remember he was saying, anyone that's annoyed at that, he was like, go fuck yourself or or shut up or qu quit complaining your pussies. I forget the exact quote. I'm getting it wrong. I'm paraphrasing, but it was something like that. And listen, I get it. You know, because if you wanted. To make that argument for Connor, which I'm not about to do, but I'm saying if you wanted to, it's not that hard. You could say, well, hold on, he's the biggest star in the division and he just lost to Dustin Poirier. Fair enough, twice, who just fought for the belt. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you could say he's next in line. And then the last person to beat him was Khabib Namagamedov. I am not making excuses for Connor. But what I'm trying to do is say, if you play devil's advocate, devil's avocado, and try and see a case for Connor, that is what you would say. And I'm also saying, and it fucking would be a bad day in the Bisping household if he could he could come back and knock out Charles Oliveira. Not that I'm being a hater. It's just that fucking you just you, the, the the Connor nut huggers would just go insane, and I, I don't oh, think yeah. I could look at Twitter ever again. <laughs> God anyway. damn, that'd be. Anyways, that would be nuts. Anyway, anyway, so nuts. co main event: Hafield dos Santos, Renato Mercano. Mercano steps off the couch uh, on Tuesday. 
five days, four days before the event, which is incredible, steps mm-hmm. up to 170, takes a five-round fight against former champion Javier Dos Sanchos, and gets the shit kicked out of him. You know, and 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 I like Moicano. I like him a lot. I think he's a hell of a fighter. I respect what he did. And he, he he's game and he has no quit. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, you know, Dos Sanchos had, had a great night. Dos Sanchos mm-hmm. is good. He's good. He's skilled. He's got no weak areas. He's got tons of experience. He hits hard, strong wrestling. And he put it on Moicano. And as, you know, mm-hmm. the first round, uh, Moicano was in it. But as, as, as the fight progressed, you saw, you can see that this was a guy that took the fight on Tuesday that was now starting to diminish and get more and more tired. Now, fair enough, even in the fifth round, you know, he kind of came out and did okay, you know. But I feel, and you probably heard the commentary and we touched on this earlier, the fight should have been stopped. The fight should have been stopped after round three, I feel. Uh, and that's really what I want to talk about because Mark Goddard called the ref, sorry, the doctor in twice. The doctor chose to let it go. Fair enough. Mark also said, listen, I'll give you 30 seconds. If you don't do something to show me you deserve to be in this fight, I'm going to stop this fight. And I guess, unfortunately for Moicano, he did. You know what I mean? He did. He he, he showed, he impressed everybody with his mm-hmm. balls, with his heart, with his courage, with his will to win. No quitting that man. I am not knocking Hernando on Moicano. It just wasn't his night. And I feel, and we kind of like, have been at loggerheads one time over one of your fights against Glover. Mm-hmm. I feel that his corner should have threw the towel in. What are your thoughts? It's it's very similar to. I, I'm no, I don't. I'm no savage. I'm not a savage. I have a a really bad double standard. I want to be left in those fights. Like yep. leave me out there. Let me do my thing. But I don't want to watch it. I don't want to see it happen to anybody else because I I care about those people. I like Hanato Moicano. I don't. That last five minutes, he didn't make any more money for that last five minutes. He didn't, or the last 10 minutes, even say, say we stopped yeah. it after the third. He made no more money for the last 10 minutes. There was nothing left to see. Like the, like RDA at that point had, had already made his point. You know what I mean? Like point proven. We know who the better fighter is. Let's, let's, why are we going to leave, leave him out there for another 10 minutes? My argument is, and always has been, there are two people. Oh, I want the microphone. Whoa. There are only two people in that whole fucking arena whose only job is to pay attention to two fighters and worry about their safety. That's it. That's it. The, the, the referees will come and who's that? room. That's the ref and the doctor. That's yep. it. Like literally the doctor's only job is to make sure that these guys, that, that us and, and the rest of the card is safe. The that referee? doctor is a savage. I knew that that doctor fucking never stopped. I mean, the UFC has the perfect doctor for letting fights go. Because, I mean, to be fair, if you're the fighter, as you say, yeah. when you're in there, because I have a massive double standard as well. I'd have been like, I'm fine. I'm fucking fine with one eye for the last half of my career anyway. You know what I mean? I shouldn't have been in there. But as a fan, when you're out there, you know, you, you kind of want them to be safe. And that doctor, yeah, he he very, he, very rarely stops fights. He ain't stopping shit. In, in Mark Goddard, I mean, he might as well just begged him. He did everything possible to try to get that doctor to stop the fight. Like, okay, Mark, someone's got to be an adult in the room here. I love Mark Goddard. I think he's like, without a doubt, there's two, there's two referees in the whole business that are the, the absolute pinnacle of refereeing. Mark Goddard's one and Jason Herzog is the other one. So Jason Herzog my, is good. You know, I was wondering who you were going to say because Herb used to be the gold standard, but unfortunately, and I'm not talking shit about Herb, right. the, I see a lot of people... You know, he's he's made a couple of mistakes. He's a human yeah. being, that's all. But Jason Herzog, yeah, he's very, very good. Very, Sorry, and he was go the on. referee. He was the referee in my fight. And <clears throat> I just I think that it needs to be those two guys' job. You're, you got your coaches. Uh, they're always going to be the most biased because like your coaches are probably the only ones that have ever seen you at your best. Because we never we never show up and it works out a hundred percent and and we perform at our absolute best for whatever reason you just never can get there but they can see it in the gym they can see the 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 glimpses of perfection they see the glimpses of greatness they they know the money that is a, that comes along with that they they're holding on to that hail mary one one punch with five seconds left that's going to win you the fight you know that that Derek lewis volkov type of situation yep yep they're holding on to that they they know what your family's like they they know you so personally, they're they're almost too close to make that decision because they're going to always believe in you to the very end. So I just don't think that 
they're in the position to to make that decision because it's not fair to them to expect them to do that to you. But if you have a goddamn doctor and a referee whose only job is to protect you, we don't need to wait till these guys are almost dead to stop the fights. I really believe that. I think and, and that eye was a mess. It was a mess. I, I think Chael says it all the time. You don't need to stop a fight when the fighter can't continue. You need to stop the fight when he can no longer win. Um, yeah. There's not a whole lot of things like like that, on at least along that route, that I agree with Chael on, and we argue about it a lot. That's the one thing that I can agree with. Like Once once the point was made that RDA wasn't going to lose that fight, I don't see any reason to leave Moicano out there any longer. Yeah, and certainly after three rounds, he's three rounds ahead now anyway. So even if by some kind of miracle, Moicano won the last two, he couldn't win a decision anyway. And the likelihood of him stopping him and getting a submission or a knockout was also even smaller. Um, and to your point... Why did they the keep it five of- rounds, by the way? Sorry. Sorry yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 that was loud. Whoa, he came yeah. in hot there. Um, no, because Fazeev Dos Anjos was supposed to be a five-round fight, wasn't it? Because right. that was the main event. But then he got pushed back for some reason. I forget what that was. Uh, so I think, and it's cause I think because Dos Anjos was like, well, I've trained for five rounds. I'm ready for five rounds. And if he wants to take another opponent, you know, it's having it at five rounds is an ad- it's an advantage for Dos Anjos because he's like, and I don't blame him. He's like, no, I'm contracted to go fucking five rounds. I have trained for five rounds, so I want to go five rounds. So I guess they obligated, uh, you know, their obligations, obligating mm-hmm. the obligations to Dos Anjos. But uh, yeah, the cornerman, as you say, right? Because we know. You say to your court, don't fucking stop this fight. Don't you dare. I even say to the referee when the referee comes in beforehand, I say, hey, do me a favor. Don't you stop this fight. And he's like, hey, Mike, you do your job. I'll do mine. You know, I'm like, all right, <laughs> fair enough. Still, just don't stop the fight, you dickhead. Um, <laughs> uh, so I understand, you know, the cornermen, but they, they do need to start doing that more. In boxing, you see it a lot. Uh, uh, Harrington O'Brien, can you just look up? I don't know how you would look this up. I don't know how many, uh, how regularly or what's the average fight per year of boxers having their corner and throw the towel in it's a hard google if you can figure it out figure it out and let me know but if you don't just ignore me in boxing you do see it kind of frequently though you know Mm -hmm. jason perillo george st pierre versus bj penn when he was cornering bj penn he threw the towel in there that is one of the only few that i could or one of the only ones part of me that i can think of in mma it's just not a part of the culture of the sport for the cornerman mm-hmm. to throw the towel in you know and i think it's time that we start having a real conversation about this that maybe the athletic commissions reach out to the coaches you know and say look listen you got to start thinking about this the long-term health of your fighter um because because they are too emotionally attached and they do believe in them and they do think they can turn it around. I mean, for Humper, Moicano's coach, I think it was after round four, he's screaming, you got a jab, you got to throw the jab. And I'm like, do you think any of that is going in? Do you think he's hearing any of that? And he's like, yes, I'm going to go out there and jab. He's like, fucking hell, mate. Yeah. <sighs> give me, give me a sip of water. I'm almost dead. Do you know what I mean? Right. And I'm not insulting anybody. I have so much respect for Moicano and his coaches. You know what I mean? And they wanted mm-hmm. the best for him. That's all. They wanted him to win. But he wasn't I, going. I wonder if, you know, I, I think that if, if that's what we wanted to, if we want to maybe get that, you know, the, the throwing the towel in or stopping the fight and, and, and saving these guys from themselves, if we wanted that to really happen, I, I would imagine it's got to start with the UFC because that's part of the problem. You get one of these prelim guys, comes in short notice, was just fighting on the regional scene. He's going to do anything possible to get his shot. He's going to cut 20 pounds in four days. He's going to be in the big show. He's going to be out of shape or not in fight shape or whatever. He's going to get in a little too deep because he wasn't ready, but he's trying to do anything he can to get in. And then you get a guy, that, and then his coach throws him the towel. How long is that guy going to be around? You know what I mean? It's it, Well, you're right, but that is an extreme circumstance. You know, when you put it together like that, that's that's quite the picture of doom and gloom for that fighter that you paint there. What about it's somebody that's a world champion that had two months to prepare? (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Went through everything right. There's, I mean, you went far to one side of the spectrum there, Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith. You know, we're going to go far to the other side. You know, there's a happy medium somewhere. Maybe a guy that's uh, had a few years in there and he's ranked number 10, you know. But um, (laughs) (laughs) um, I'm just just saying if the UFC gave a gave, they were to say, "Listen, guys, stop being so afraid that we're gonna you're gonna lose your job off of one real bad night." Because, like you said, maybe you get a top ten guy who just doesn't show up for whatever reason, has the worst day of his life in the octagon, doesn't show up, 
you know, corner man throws in the towel. Go ahead. Question. So do you think it's the corner man thinking, oh, all right, no. do you think it's they're not stopping the fight because they want them to win? Or do you think it's because they think they're going to get cut from the UFC? Because I don't think it's that. I don't think they're concerned about them getting cut from the UFC in that moment. They're thinking, for, I know you can win. Please pull it back. But I will say this as well. So it's a question and a statement. Some cornermen, they have their egos attached to it because it's not just the fighter in there. It's them. and They're representing that fighter and that gym. You know what I'm saying? What do you think of that? I think, it's, I think you're 100% right on par right there. I think that there are some coaches out there that have some egos. And by them throwing in the towel, saying I didn't do a good, they think it. They think it says I didn't do a good enough job preparing this guy. Correct. Um, I think they're. I think in certain circumstances that you know it could be they don't want him to get cut. They don't. You know they don't want to. Like there's. I. I think a lot of times it's we still can do this. There's still a chance. You throw the towel in, you're just giving up. You know what I mean? And I think there's a lot of different things to it. But I. I totally agree with you. I think it needs to be a more normal thing. I, I think that. Yep. Sometimes it's I, I I think again not for me don't don't I hope my coach no, 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 don't no. do this shit to me but I think I, I think it needs to be it needs to be okay and and some of its fighters too like remember how much how much shit David Branch got for uh, tapping the strikes to Luke Rockhold I believe it was oh yeah think, yeah yeah the, like yeah. he just got annihilated online by fighters alike and fans so like. Sometimes we got to police ourselves a little bit and say, listen, you know when you're stuck. You know when you're stuck, stuck. And David Branch was stuck. And yep. he tapped his strikes because he was, I don't, I'm going to phone it in. I, I, I can't get out and I'm taking shots for no reason. So I, I think that those two things, maybe as fighters, we need to maybe police ourselves a little bit. I totally agree. Uh, we're going to have a quick change of gears here because I was looking at the notes to see what was next. And we're, doing, we're heavy on the in depth analysis here, but we're going to talk about point number three here. Point number three on the nose, because obviously I'm a married man, but she was one of my favorites back in the day. Harry, and I'm not going to, I can't believe I'm associating her name with Harrington's name, but Harrington, come on here and show yourself and tell me about this. We are talking about, of course, the one and only Pamela Anderson. Uh, so they, they've been doing this thing recently with, uh, with this show, Chicago. I don't know if you, you know, the, it was like a famous the musical. Movie. It's a musical. It's been on Broadway for 25 years now. It was a, it was a movie starring Casper Zeta Jones. Uh, well, they've had the same girl playing Roxy Hart for 25 years now, and she is now well into her 60s. Uh, a main plot point of the show go. is that uh, is that she's pregnant. So uh, they time needed, to go. They needed yeah. to recast her uh, and a bit of stunt casting. Pamela Anderson's going to make her Broadway debut uh, later on this year. Yeah, I couldn't give a fuck about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to talk about Pamela Anderson and when she was younger. In fact, if Pamela Anderson is going to get pregnant, and that's not she. She hasn't aged well. I feel like she's doing okay. <laughs> she well, bring I mean, her up, in, bring her up in the Baywatch days. I mean, that looks like my wife when she gets out of bed with no makeup on. You know what I mean? Very <laughs> scary. We need we need oh, a Baywatch. Man. Were you a fan of Pamela back in the day on Baywatch? Uh, Brian uh, 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 Anthony Smith. No, I think I'm probably a little too young for Baywatch. Dead? Uh, how old are you? 33. 10 years old. I mean, come on. Jesus Christ. I'm the, okay. I'm the same That'll age. Work. It would be on syndication all the time on like UPN. So I kind of grew up on the after school special, Pam Anderson, for sure. I was a big fan of Pamela Anderson back in the day. Give me some Yasmin Bleeth. She was another good one. Sure, we can do Baywatch. that. I'm yeah, a remember Yasmin? I'm disappointed in myself I... that me and Anthony are the same age and I haven't accomplished anything. <laughs> <laughs> don't beat yourself up rebecca are you uh come here babe uh am i what am i, what? I was gonna say, are you watching the new hulu show pam and tommy i haven't watched that is it any good it's incredible and the girl lily james she plays a spot on pam anderson it's like pam is back in her prime it's worth it just for that pretty great say hi hold on we're just discussing Pamela Anderson. Okay. I don't know why I called you again. Hello. Yeah, yeah, just a little break it up. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on Pamela Anderson? Uh, in what way? I don't know. You just walked by. I thought I'd say hi. Oh, um, I don't really care. She's been cast in, in this new musical. I know, I did notice Chicago that. Thoughts. Break it down. Uh, hello. Come objectify you? women with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. So, so which that, one, that's old school. In your opinion, which is the best looking out of all those women? Um, what would you say, Anthony? To be honest with you, I think 
Um, Pam or her on the far right? Is that Carbon Pam. Electra on yeah, the far it's left? Pam. Then it's Pam. Then it's Yasmin Blade. Yeah, but these are old pictures. These are not very nice pictures. These are like 2005 or something. Yeah. They don't look very kind of on trend. I'll take them now. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go on, get out of it, babe. Anyway, Pam's anyway, all right. Yeah, Pam's all right. She's all right, yeah. yeah so anyway, yeah. I just saw that in the notes, and I thought we'll just break up the MMA talk with a bit of Pamela Anderson yeah. talk. Why not? Okay. Why, why not? not? You know what I mean? All right, guys, listen, a lot of people are going through things right now, and that's why I'm here to tell you about better help. Better help offers professional counseling done securely online. So if there is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, definitely check out better help. Whatever you're dealing with, Talking to somebody always helps, and they have a wide range of counselors available for you. Plus, it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available, and it's easy to get started. This is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online, and BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so it's easy and free to switch counselors if you need. Look. Listen, if you've got something, there's a little voice in your head, there's a little doubt, there's a little anxiety, maybe it's anger management, maybe some kind of issue, maybe an addiction issue, speaking to somebody, it helps. And these people are professionals, as I say. Okay, so join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional by going to betterhelp.com slash believe. Okay, new testimonials are posted daily. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are now recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Give this a try. You'll be glad. One of the best things I ever did was start going to anger management. Now look at me. I'm like a big pussycat. I'm getting punched in the face in New Orleans and I don't even react. Go to betterhelp.com slash believe. Betterhelp.com slash believe to get 10% off your first month. One more time, betterhelp.com slash believe 10% off your first month. Good luck. Anyway, Bryce Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell, tell me about Bryce Mitchell's fight. Bryce Mitchell, what a what what a fun dude just to to listen to. Um obviously we tried to get him on the show today, but god damn that guy is a, a he is a real one because his manager told me today that he's on the farm catching up on farm shit for get the next out of week, town for the next no. week. Yeah, he's behind. He's because he was at, he was doing the fight week thing, so he's got to catch up. So he's off the grid for See, an entire week. I would do the podcast. I, I can't do an Arkansas <laughs> accent. Can you do an Arkansas accent, Anthony? Come on, no, I believe can't. you me. We're gonna have you doing accents. Come Eventually. on, Annie. I, get, I can't. Get, I can't do an Arkansas accent. Let's for get sure. that Arkansas accent. I can't do that. No, <laughs> no, sorry. But if you. Give it a shot. Come on, man. I can't. On, I, I'm not good at accents at all. I'll sound like a <laughs> damn idiot. Harrison, anyways, give me, give me your, Harrison, give me your best ooh, Bryce I bet, Mitchell. I bet Brian's got a good one. Oh, you tell me I can't even talk about Arkansas. <laughs> oh, Arkansas. <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> Till the day they put me in the dirt talking about Arkansas. Give me hey, the camo shorts. Hey, fucking Brian. <laughs> Brian, uh, get your ass on here and give me a bit about Arkansas. I don't do a good hillbilly Harrington, though. Has it that was a good one. one. Harrington that was, was a good, good. That was good. That was that good. Was. Anyway, back to the fight. Oh, <laughs> uh, he, uh, yeah, so we weren't able to get him on, which was disappointing, but. Hopefully we can get him on next week. I'm going to try again. So, but yeah, he, uh, you know, he didn't really do anything special. He, he, they, I don't know. I don't know what Jimmy trains at. I don't know who his coaches are in Arkansas. I don't know how he got so goddamn good at jujitsu and wrestling. Um, I, goddamn when in the clinch and the wrestling positions, he does it all right. He doesn't rush. He's patient. He's, it, he just makes good decisions on his feet, but it's all very, very basic, which is, you know, at the end of the day, the basics wins fights. It's the fundamentals. He, he didn't get outside of himself and try to do anything special on his feet. He really pressured Edson, which makes it hard to throw those kicks as often as he wants to. It's hard to kick off your back foot. So yep. he, uh, yeah, I thought it was funny in the post fight press conference. He talked about, I don't know. I just, I tried to check him. And I don't know. Work. I, I, I tried to check him. <laughs> he said, I tried to check him. And uh, so I just had to get out of the way. That's what he kept saying. He couldn't figure the kicks out. So he just pressured him. Yeah. Just kind of jammed him up a little bit and drug him to the mat. It is, but I will say, his timing on his level change mm -hmm. and takedowns. Oh, it was brilliant. Was perfect. It, yeah. You can You couldn't teach it or write it up any better than that. It's you don't. Even, you don't even have to be a good fucking wrestler when your timing on your takedowns is that good. I mean, Bob Bowles is such a fan favorite. The, the, yeah. What he's given to the sport over the last 10, 12, 12 years, I think it was, 2010 maybe. Um, 
But he had nothing Saturday night. He had a good 30 seconds or maybe 90 seconds when the fight started. He landed a few kicks. And then mm. after that, that was it. As soon as he got that first takedown. And as you said, the timing on them was absolutely fantastic. Bob was a tough motherfucker. Great jiu-jitsu. He's been in there with everybody. I think, I think, I think, you know, the time is running out on his career, to be fair. I'm not taking away from Bryce Mitchell and I'm not taking anything away from Barboza. But there's a lot of losses in, mm-hmm. in a record where it used to be all wins, you know. Uh, but Bryce Mitchell, I mean, what a future this man has. I think he could be a potential content. I mean, I think he's a contender now, but I think mm-hmm. he'll probably work his way top five and we might see him mentioned in potential title fights or number one title fight eliminators, stuff like that. But I'll tell you what else was really special, not just the performance. What he said on the microphone afterwards, giving that $45,000 to charity for the children's hospitals uh, in Arkansas or hospital. And incredible. Fortunately, Dana White said, no, you don't have to do that. I'll give it. So Dana stepped up to the plate. So that was awesome about Dana as well. Uh, But what a human being, you know what I mean? Because, yeah, he's making money and I'm sure he's you know got other things going on, other endeavors. He's got sponsorships and stuff like that. But still, he's going in there and he's fighting. He's obviously, now we know his purse was 45 to show, 45 to win. And to just give away $45,000 of that hard-earned money like that, that's a special human being. Yeah, that's uh, that, that was shocking to me. Like, that's, that's not an insignificant amount of money. That's a, a big no. chunk of money. I was also shocked. Like, God damn, you fought Edson Barbosa for 45, 45. Holy yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. yeah. He's been out a while. You know what I mean? He's kind of inconsistent. He's not as active as, as you know, you would hope. So it seems like he's yeah. been around forever. So you think he's got a million fights, but it's only, that's only, it was his sixth fight, I think. And yeah, he's six and oh in the UFC now. So that's actually not, I suppose, like where most guys might be at in their sixth fight in the UFC is probably not mm. the bad spot, but, um, that's just a tough goddamn fight. Um, but I just can't, I, I I don't know for being 45 and 45 and then being out for a year and a half and deciding I'm just going to give away half my money. It's it's pretty noble. Yeah. It's pretty. And and, and it's nice because he, and I don't want to get into this stuff, but he kind of rubbed me up the wrong way with some of the comments on the Helwani show. Nothing to do with the gun stuff. Don't worry about that. I've talked about guns plenty of times on here and pissed enough people off. But when he just denied all the the Sandy Hook shootings and the school shootings, you know, and I was like, yeah, I, I didn't like that. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of grieving parents somewhere and whatever, whatever. Okay, that's that. But then he fucking does a 180 and does that, uh, dedicating all that or donating the money to the children's hospitals. It's amazing. He's a great human being. We had him on the Wayne Show on Friday for the UFC. Yeah, I see and that. That looked like what you guys a had character. A lot of fun. Oh, man, it was awesome. It was, I said to them, though, because they had me making cocktails at nine o'clock in the morning. They had me making cocktails. I made a howl ahead martini. I'm like, you do realize if I'm arrested running down the strip totally naked in about four hours from now, it's your (laughs) fault. It all started here with the first cocktail at nine o'clock in the morning because once I pop, I can't stop. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Bryce Mitchell, congrats to him. Greg Mm Hardy, are we missing one before Greg Hardy? There was Um, was a fight in between Greg Hardy and Bryce Mitchell? No, it was it. Yeah. No, yeah, it was it. Greg Hardy, man. I mean, listen, he's got some work to do. I like Greg. And I know that's finding, controversial finding a job. Hey. Finding a finding a job might be the first order of business. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't know if they'll cut him, but because he's still got some name value, you know, because his foot because of his football career. But showing up, I mean, he showed up fight week, two hundred and ninety five pounds. That's mm. thirty pounds to cut as a heavyweight. And with respect, when you look at his body physique, you know. He's got the weight to lose. He's a he's little got chubby. It to lose. He's soft. Fucking yeah, he's soft. Fuck him. He's soft. There you go. You know, got to take it seriously. I'm sure he trains. I'm sure he does all that. But maybe because of his knockout power and his God given athletic ability, maybe he steps off the gas a little bit. Because cutting weight 30 pounds as a heavyweight, you're going to be at a detriment, you know? So he's got, mm-hmm. got to sort that out. But if I'm honest, that didn't even come into it because Sergey Spivak was just far too technical with the wrestling, the jujitsu, the positioning, the composure. I mean, it was not a good night for, for Greg Hardy. No, I'm so impressed by Spivak, though. The way he got that underhook and stepped through and just hip tossed Greg. I bet Greg Hardy's never been thrown like that before. Um, 295 pounds? Yeah, he's too goddamn big. He's not that many people on the planet that can throw him like that. And then he was picking him up from the suplex position as well. Yeah, I mean, he and, is and strong. Him. God, that guy yeah. was strong. I was, listen, I, I don't think it's a secret. I don't like Greg Hardy. I think he's a piece of shit. 
I tell Rashad all the time, you're too, you're way too cool. Do you really? Yeah, I tell Rashad all the time, you are way too cool and way too good of a human being to to attach your name to this piece of shit. And Rashad, you know, tells me, you know, know, Rashad tells me, I I respect that. Yeah, I've been, I and that's how I believe. That's how I. That's how I feel. I just think he's a terrible dude. Um, you know, some people deserve second chances. Uh, for me, his, his has sailed a long time ago. But, um, you know, Rashad. Have you said, spoken to Greg personally? No, no, he he won't talk yeah. to me. I think the only reason he hasn't come to me in the media is because of my relationship with Rashad. Because any chance I've gotten, I've I've shit all over Greg Hardy, and he's never said anything to me. But I think that I think that Rashad wants to help him. I think Rashad feels like i can i can help this person and that that's kind of rashad's personality especially you know later in life for him he wants to save people he wants to help people he wants them to be better um and you know greg from from what i understand he's he shows up at the gym he trains hard he tries he's a you know he learns and listens and whatever he's just too far behind the curve right now um Mm. i think he just got thrown in the deep end of the pool and he's not he's not good enough to swim well, Harrington or Brian, just look up Greg Hardy's last few fights because I don't think they've been throwing him necessarily to the wolves. I mean, when he fought Taito Avarsa, Taito Avarsa had lost a few as well. And stylistically, mm-hmm. they're both brawlers. You know what I mean? So it yeah, kind of made so sense in that regard. Coin flip, yeah. yeah, coin flip, exactly. An exciting coin flip, which it was. And then he had, obviously, last night he had Sergei Spivak. Who else saw Spivak? Then he lost to Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy, um, um, Marcin oh, Tabura. Mar- yeah, another, yeah. another, you know, but that's another smaller heavyweight that just out grappled him. Then he beat Maurice Green, who's again very, very green. Pardon the, t- the yeah. term. Well, I don't think pun. I don't think Maurice Green's even in the UFC anymore. No, nope. I don't he, think Jorgen De Castro is either. No, they're both gone. So they didn't last no. around long. And then before that, Ben Sassoli, who again isn't exactly a world beater with respect, and Alexander Volkov, who is. So right. yeah, so yeah. Shut him it, out. Anyway, and, anyway and that'll again, do on that. Yeah, so maybe, maybe you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe that's maybe I. I guess he didn't get thrown to the wolves. <laughs> to be honest, no, not 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 really. Yeah, they tried right. to bring him along slowly, and then they mm-hmm. give him a fun matchup and tie to a bar. So and tie, I think at that point, had lost a couple. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it was like, okay, um, yeah, Harrington. What else have we got? Uh, I'm... I'll allow you to chew us up or tee us up on a topic. Well, I'm a big fat dummy, and I forgot a fight in between uh, the the Bryce Mitchell fight and the uh, Greg Hardy fight. That being Alex Oliveira versus oh, Christ oh Almighty, Kevin, Kevin Holland. Holland. That was fun. Yeah, that was a great fight. That yeah. was awesome. You, yeah, Ke- that was one of those fights where you can get all the you can get all the you can get all the lessons from a loss without actually having to take it. You know, he had a he had a real tough first round, a lot of adversity. Mm. Oliveira, I thought, was out striking him. Um, Kevin Holland's timing was off a little bit. Oliver even looked bigger, which I thought was odd. Um, you know, Kevin Holland comes down from middleweight and he's still not a large welterweight. Um, and then, you know, I mean, he, he was able to turn it around in the next round. I think that was, I think that was kind of what everyone's thought. If Oliver can not get caught and maybe he can beat him, but if he catches him, he's going to put him down. Do you know what I loved? And it, I mean, it's just so Kevin Holland, isn't it? It's, it was very, very cool. I mean, because you're right, Oliveira had a great opening round and it was looking yeah. worrisome. If you're a Kevin Holland fan, you were kind of worried uh, yeah. at the end of that first round. It wasn't looking good. But when he went for the rear naked choke, and he went for the rear naked choke under the arm. And yeah. Kevin Holland was just like, look at all nonchalant that. Like that, you know? <laughs> I, I, I was like, you're a son of a bitch. Even in that moment there, when you've had a tough round, you're having your ass kicked, you still playing up to the camera. So well done for Kevin turning it around, drops him that cheeky little right hand. Uh yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Anything worth mentioning on the on the prelims that stood out for you, Anthony? Um I mean there was some there were some great fights. There's some great there fights. Anything, uh, anything you like... want to touch on before we move on? Oh Jalen Turner. J- Jalen Turner. Oh yeah, that kid is fucking good. He used to be a training partner. Yeah, yeah. So he was my good. main partner for when I fought Anderson Silva and when I fought Luke Rockhold too. Not really? necessarily, we weren't doing hard spars, but just light and technical. He's six right. foot three. He's fucking, he's got so great. Yeah, 78 kid. inch reach. Yeah. 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 No, he's really, really good. But now he's submitting people as well. Uh, Marina Moroz Agapova. That was a good one. She got the rear naked choke. Yeah. Umar Numega Madoff. I mean, it is the new Khabib. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. impressive was he? His kicking game was wild too. 
unbelievable like the speed of those like question mark kicks and and how quickly even like lead leg like without a switch it was that guy's good too what is he 145 right is he 145 harrison just looked that up i think, I think he's, he's 145 30, okay i thought he was 35 he might be oh, maybe maybe i don't know yeah whatever either whichever way, weight division either way he's he good yeah he's, he's gonna be a contender 100 percent uh yeah he is a 45er yeah 45 nice. yeah Okay, all right, all right. So what's this going on with Brock Lesnar, Harrington? I know you like to talk about Brock Lesnar. Well, I mean, just that the, the rumors can finally be put to bed. Brock Lesnar says that he's officially too old for this game. He is planning on staying retired. You might remember a few years ago, he had that moment. Uh, I think it was after DC beat Stipe, stepped in the cage and, and, and got in DC space. And they were talking about, you know, uh, uh, talks about his WWE contract having an out for him to take a one-off UFC fight. Uh, like I said, he's put all that to bed. He says the WWE star going forward, no uh, plans to make a return to the UFC. One piece, Harrison, come back on, please. One piece that you need to include, right? When you're doing the notes, it's a, little, it's a learning curve for Anthony, for you, for me, for all of us. We're learning. We're human beings. As we go along, we get better, hopefully. Um, so this whole topic is talking about Cain Velasquez being too old for a return to the UFC. What piece of information did you not put in it? Don't, uh, how much, uh, Brad, Anthony, what do you oh. think I'm alluding to? His <laughs> fucking age, perhaps. Yeah, you know, yeah. how can, how can we, you think you would put his yeah. age in the in the note? Yeah, I mean, I'm not exactly a crack reporter. Uh, he is 44 years of age right now. That's too old. It's That's too old so to be old. Back. That's so old. Oh, I'm 43. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. I was old. wondering if you're gonna catch that. God, <laughs> yeah, damn, yeah, That's you... so old. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah how long do you think you'll go for on today oh man i don't know not too much longer a couple more years three maybe how's the body years feel? it's not bad it's not bad i'm 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 taking longer to heal i'm not like super banged up but if i do hurt something it's taking much longer yeah, yeah. so and i want to do something else with my life at some point in time i still want to always yeah. do the podcasting thing and and you know doing this podcast and and like i love this part of it but I don't know. I got a whole, I've been, this is all I've done since I was 17. So mm. it's all I know. So there's part of me that's excited for like another chapter. I don't know what that is, but I've, I still have, I have a whole nother career ahead of me in something else probably. Yeah, that's right. Because that was the mindset I had because uh, when you retire from fighting, you're like, or, or being an athlete, whatever it is, or a sportsman, mm -hmm. you're like, shit, that's done. And it's like, okay, yeah, that is done. But now it's on to the next thing. Just because mm -hmm. that fight career is over doesn't mean that I can't do something else, you know, and I've got a lot of opportunities just like you have as well in the broadcast side of things. And I do a few other things. I've got a few business ventures that I do and I'm like, I'm still doing me, you know, I'm still just doing other things. You know, I'm, I'm not fighting anymore, but I guess I'm fighting in a professional sense um, because people always say, are you going to train anybody? I'm like, yes, I would love to, but right now I can't because when you're coaching someone, it's a selfless task. It's all about the fighter or the athlete. You know what I mean? And right mm -hmm. now, I can't commit to doing that. Do you think you'll want to coach someone one day? I think so. I think I'm kind of in the same place as you. You know, I, yeah. I, I think once I get myself settled and, you know, like, you know, I'll retire at some point in time and then I'll go into something else and you'll have to build whatever that second thing is, you know, on top of the broadcasting and the podcasting and that, that stuff. Like, you're going to have to build something else and mm -hmm. then kind of, you know, like have a baby and you got to take care of this baby for a while. And then once, you know, once that second thing, you know, is off the ground and moving, I don't think I could, I don't think I could train someone from the ground up though. I, I think taking someone who's already got some talent and some skills and abilities and, and you tweak it and use your own experiences and like, like the white belts at the gym when I go in, like, it's I'm, so annoying. No offense. Oh well, God. you white belts is the worst on kids. And again, yeah. I want to train kids, but like, cause we have UFC gym. I have mm -hmm. a UFC gym, pardon me. And they're like, oh, Michael, you should do a class. And I'm like, well, I do want to do that. And I would like to train my son. But then I know I'm going to have tons of other little kids and other little people. And if you've ever tried to coach someone and they don't know the ass from the elbow, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you're a high-level guy. I'm a high-level guy. And I'm like, yeah. oh, God, I can't deal with this shit. No, you don't do that. I'm like, oh, God. So, yeah, yeah. maybe I haven't got the patience for it because it's tough. Yeah, yeah give me like a middle-of-the-road amateur. Like, I'm... Like someone who's halfway through their amateur career or something. Like they got the the gist of it, still really green, still a lot to learn, but like they have the the I don't know, the bones already, the the framework. I just you know, like I'm still very traditional in jujitsu. Like I still train in the gi three or four days a week, you know, when I'm outside of training camp. So 
Oh, nice. I'll, I'll go into the gym and, and it's just this whole group of white belts. And, and my, you know, my, the guy that gave me my black belt, my black belt, I'm like, Hey, you want to grab a couple of these guys? And I was fuck no, not a chance. Yeah. Cause I'm not no. there yet. I'm not, in, I'm not in that place in life where I can do the teaching the, the white belts and the, the kids and the soccer moms and the middle-aged dads. Who uh, the soccer moms, no, no, I not the soccer I don't have it. No. Like, I'll give you a piece of advice. Like if we're training at the oh. same time and I see something, I'll be like, Hey, Hey, try this real quick. And then like, then I can just fly away and go do my own thing. But like leading a class and breaking it down and teaching the skill, like step by step. I just, because you get nothing any. out of tapping those out either. If you go roll mm -hmm. with a white belt, you know what I mean? You, yeah. you, you don't gain anything. And there's a potential that you hurt them or they hurt right. you because they're doing something, you know, they're not conforming to mm -hmm. the rules. You don't know quite how to move. They're spazzing out a little bit. You get caught yeah. in the face with an elbow or a knee right. or something like that. That's for that's purple belts. So and that's, that's for the purple belts to deal with. And then once they work their way up, I'm more than happy to help them. But yeah. And again, yeah. I don't, uh, you know, no offense to the white belts out there. I, we, hey, we you got to start guys. somewhere. We love gotta you start guys. somewhere. Keep coming. Exactly. You got to start somewhere. But I'm, I'm more of the, the fly by guy. Where all well, these... you are a world class UFC light heavyweight contender, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You shouldn't be training with white belts. Yeah, well, and, and I'll train. That. You know, I'll train at the same time, and I'm the guy who I'll cruise by, and just fix something really quick and say, "Ah, uh, stop doing that. That bothers me." Or put your hand here. Or <laughs> you know, hey, try uh, it like this. It's got nothing to do with me. You're moving. driving I'm me not... crazy. Move your hand. Don't put that there. <laughs> yeah, right. Let me ask you, what is the biggest amount of money that you've bet on something on a sporting event or anything in, in general? Um, probably five, four or five grand, probably. What was you betting on? It was fights. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to one-up you here because Drake. Boxing, yeah. Come on, Harrington. Come on. Do it. What do you want? I was gonna say my biggest bet ever is twenty five hundred when I absolutely didn't have twenty five hundred. I, I was gonna say when have you ever had twenty five hundred to lose? Oh, trust me, I didn't. I was in a <laughs> lot of trouble if I lost this bet. And thank you got God, a pretty good bonus this year. You thank, had, oh, yeah. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank God, Anthony Smith came through against Shogun Hua. Oh, did you bet it on Anthony Smith against Shogun? Oh yeah. Oh, no, did yeah. you really? I was wildly confident. Now, what? are you just kissing wow. Anthony's ass, or are you telling the truth? Well, no, I swear well, to God, Ralph, Ralph Sutton, the owner of this network, was standing there doing like uh, he was like doing network issues. As I was watching on the Studio B computer, freaking out, just going absolutely <laughs> crazy. I was like, all right, well, that's my rent for the next two months. So, what did you right. win? Will you owe me a drink? <laughs> by the way. You're welcome. What did you win? <laughs> that twenty. 20 I was like, it was twenty five hundred. I think it was minus one forty heading into that fight, so it came out to about two grand or something like that. Nice, so nice, like, right. nice. I have a betting on Anthony story that didn't go as well. Oh, go oh, on. Oh, here we go. I think I've told this to you already. Um, when you fought John Jones, if you just would have stayed down, we all would be fucking driving gold plated. I mean, if you would, <laughs> you know what I mean. If you would have just taken the DQ, man, we all would have had fucking jets. How Damn. many times does that get brought up to you about the John Jones thing? Because and just real quick, if anyone doesn't know, what was it? I'm Did he sorry. knee in the balls? Was it? Was it? No, it was a knee to the head. I was, I was down. Oh, knee, knee to the head of a down opponent. You were down for a little mm -hmm. while, and it was so far on in the fight. If you'd have just stayed down and said you couldn't have continued, he would have been mm -hmm. disqualified, and you would have been the light heavyweight champion of the world. Now I get and I respect one hundred percent why you didn't do that. I totally do, and I'm totally with you. And if I was fine, I would have done the exact same thing. But how many times did people say that to you? Uh, it, yeah, a lot, a lot. Actually, I did a. I jumped on with uh, Teddy Atlas earlier today, and that was one of the first things they brought up was, oh, the, tell us about it, you know? And honestly, I, I wish so, that... Oh, oh, Anthony, oh, <laughs> told me this fucking, the fucking guy needs you in the head. I can't do a fucking Teddy Atlas. I, I, try. Love, I love Teddy. I love fucking love the guy as well. But it, your story, that's a, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good so, Teddy Atlas. You... <laughs> I've never tried to do a Teddy Atlas before, but you know, it did the fucking knee in the head. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. I've never fucking That's tried it. You know, this was, you know, <laughs> it's just a case because he's kind of broken up, isn't it? The yeah. Way that he talks. Yeah. Yeah. He's a yeah. little bit broken. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, there was never a choice. 
There was never a choice. And I think that's what people think. They're like, all right, I made this conscious decision to not do that. Um, at the time, I had no idea that I would have been the champion. I know that my coaches didn't want me to keep going because they were like, I could just tell. Well, you compromised. What, yeah, they could tell I was hurt. They could tell I was hurt. And they just kept saying, you know, I remember looking at Mark and, and I remember it being like real blurry for a second. And I looked at Mark and he was like, what did he say? He just said, are you actually okay? And I just went, yeah. And he's like, you're lying. And I went, yeah, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> so then can you say anything just, other than yeah? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. So he just said, are you hurt? Like, and I, or he said, are you okay? I said, yeah. Are you lying? I said, yeah. And then he was, he said, if you're not okay, don't keep going. And I just said, I'm fine. Mm. But it was never like, oh my God, I could be the champion. It was what I didn't want to do and what I've never been able to do in my entire career. I wasn't willing to let John, John Jones know he hurt me. I, I didn't, uh, I would never, I would never have given him, to, given really? him that in the moment. Never. See, that's interesting. So that, and I totally get it because you're not weighing up those kind of ramifications. Right. You know, you're just like, am I okay? Am I not okay? You got the referee in there. You got a doctor in there. You got the whole mm -hmm. world watching. You know, you're just like, you are figuring out. Hold on. I, I think I'm okay. I'm good to fight. That's because by definition, we're not pussies. Most of mm -hmm. us, maybe one or two are. Um, but, but generally we're not. Um, oh, and I couldn't say it. I, I can't, I can't say it out loud. Like, I just can't say it. Like my, you my just God couldn't damn. allow yourself to say, yeah, I'm not good. Even yeah, though it I was can't. an illegal blow. Yeah. Like I could be holding on to my head after it's detached and I'll tell you like, no, I'm good. It's fine. Like yeah. I could never say, I just can't. My, my, my uncle, uh, my uncle Todd has, has been around my whole life. He, he, me and, uh, his son, Chris, same age, wrestled together, played football together our entire lives. And he's been at every goddamn sporting event. And, and what he's always said, no matter what you, you get hit hard on the football field, like you, you take a heart, you know, you take a hard fall wrestling, you get slammed on your head, whatever, get the fuck up is what he's always said. He'll look you right yep. in your eyes and scream, scream at you from the stands. Get the fuck up. Like, I like this even guy. if you're hurt, don't look hurt, you know, puff your chest out. Put your chin up in the air. You're fine. And that, so that's always kind of stuck with me. Like, as soon as he hit me with the knee, I kind of had to shake it off for a second. But I was like, I got to get to my feet. Like, I'm not letting John Jones for one second in this fight think that he's got something on me. And as soon as we came yeah. together again, I spent the next rest of the fight saying, you, you're a pussy. I thought you hit harder than this. I thought you were better than this. Like, I'll never give it to you. I'll never give it. Well, and if he knows now, it doesn't count. Because during, cause that night, he didn't know it. And that's all that matters. Yeah, well, I was going to say, when you get a chance to fight him again, uh, he'll know that. He'll know that he didn't hurt you. But that's probably not going to happen because he's going to be at heavyweight. Uh, the reason I brought up the betting thing was because, as you probably heard about it Saturday night, Drake put on $275,000 on Jorge Masvidal, which, of course, came in he, and he lost. So that was a big waste there. I mean, of course, listen, Drake's loaded. Just look yeah. up his net worth, uh, Harrington O'Brien, please. Uh, you know, because I said on the broadcast, Joe Rogan was like, you know, he put 275. I was like, well, he's going to be sweating a little bit now because the fight wasn't going well. And Joe's like, yeah, he can afford it. I'm like, yeah, he can. Of course he can. He's probably worth $100 million. But still, I don't think anybody likes to lose $275,000. It's still a, a lot of money unless you are out of your mind. Nobody likes to lose $275,000. So according to Celebrity Net Worth, which is not the most uh, accurate site of all time, it says his salary is seventy million a year, and his net worth is about two hundred million. So somebody has a yeah. problem saving. Number one. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, how long has he had that quote unquote job? You know what I mean? But right. yeah, he's not bothered about two hundred seventy five grand. But it stings, of course. That's yeah, why it's gonna he hurt a little bit. That's why he bet it in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Because right. he wanted to win. Because if you don't give a fuck about it, is that why are you going to bother betting? You know right. what I mean? If he's going to win 200 grand off that, or, or well, he was a three to one underdog. So it was actually this was what was wild about the bet. He took a ten to one underdog line, saying that Jorge Masvidal would win the fight by decision. So it wasn't like a knockout wouldn't have been good for Drake. He needed it to go all five oh. for Jorge to get his hand raised, which is I don't see how anyone could predict that. No, two point seven five million is what he would have got, though. I mean, I don't care who you are with that one, but that's going to get okay. the juices flowing. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure like two hundred and whatever thousand dollars is probably like, probably like our five or six thousand dollars. Like, like 
I'm, I mean, I'll still have a house afterwards, but it's going to suck and I'll be real pissed about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what would that? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's still equivalent to us putting down a decent bet. You yeah, know what right, I mean? It's Not a that decent I'm, bet, but it it's hurts. Still a, it's we'll $275,000. It's still a lot of money. It's a lot of money. All right. Okay. Anything else before we get to some questions, Brian or Harrington? Harrington, have you looked at the news? Do we have any breaking stories? Uh, are you coming? Are you working the desk this weekend, Anthony? I am. I am. Nice. You calling the uh, fights? I am not. No, I leave for England Friday. I'll be on the road for two weeks. Got this documentary coming out. Then we've got UFC. What are we going to do about our show? Don't worry. I'm bringing. You see the good thing about this mic and this webcam? Portable, baby. Mobile. Coming with. All right. Coming we're on the with. B Y M on the road. Uh, what about all uh, these fancy ass shows? England. Hold on. What about all these fancy ass shows that you're doing over there and all these guest appearances? I don't got one. You like do, we're supposed to get... be endearing me to the UK crowd and the UK. This listeners? is what I want. This, this is what I want. Talk shit. Give me a hard time. What? Are oh, you talking about this expo? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll have a word. I'll do it right now. Hold on. I'm gonna send them a <laughs> message. I send them a message. Andy Cleek. Hold on. Where is he? He's the promoter. Yeah, it's all, not me. Got all these, got all these fighters. All these, all these folks. Hold on, hold on. Like, hey, what's up? By the way, uh, Andy, I'm talking to Anthony Smith on my podcast live right now as we do this. We're talking about the expo. By the way, we've got George St. Pierre. We've got Randy Couture. We've got all these people. For the love of MMA.co.uk, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to go. But Andy, the purpose of this message that Anthony Smith, UFC contender, co-host of Believe You Me, ESPN analyst, one of the best in the business, wants to, is giving me a hard time. Giving me shit, Andy saying, What the fuck? Where's my booking? So, Andy, I'm posing the question to you. Where the fuck is Anthony Smith's booking? Bye. See? Boom. <laughs> Sent. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. I'm doing what I can here, buddy. All right. I feel but, better. I feel better now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you want to come April 2nd and 3rd? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And by I the way, so. I, that seems like a good time to plug this. Uh, and yeah, we might make that happen then. Fingers crossed. I'll put him under mm -hmm. pressure. Um, George St. Pierre, Randy Couture, Tito Ortiz, uh, Carlos Condit, the, the, the Don Fry. The fucking list yeah. goes on. There's, there's so many. There is a lot. Darren Till. Um, who else? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot. For there's the a, love, yeah, MMA.co.uk is the website. April 2nd and 3rd in Manchester. Harrington, was there any breaking news? Uh, well, yeah. Also, UFC London main events are Tom Aspinall going to be there. And I was thinking, oh, yeah. while we're, yeah, while, uh, while we're plugging things, uh, if you're checking, you know, if you're listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you find podcasts, make sure that you, you know, click that follow button, give us a five star rating, positive review. If you're listening and watching on iTunes, hit that follow button, hit the subscribe, uh, the notification bell to know whenever we drop a new video. And if you want to catch over 300 episodes of this podcast, you can't find anywhere else, ad free and uncensored, head to gasdigitalnetwork.com, use the promo code BYM, get a seven day free trial to over 20 great shows on the network um oh, very well said thank you uh there's one thing it's not exactly breaking news it, it came out like over the weekend dana white was talking about it but we didn't get a chance to discuss it yet islam makachev uh was talking all that shit about fighting rda at 178 apparently dana made the call islam said no and because of that islam still has one uh fight left before he fights for a title he's gonna need to rebook that benil dariush fight what do you guys think about that yeah interesting one i mean <sighs> I mean, Islam did fight Bobby Green. He did make short work of Bobby Green. Uh, he's on a 10-fight win streak. He probably deserves a title fight. But guess what? It's not my fucking company. Do you know what I mean? So it is what it is. Uh, Oliver is fighting Justin Gagey. In the meantime, if Oliver uh, Islam wants to stay busy, Benil would be the perfect guy. And that's about that. Dos Anjos was talking shit about Islam. though. said he doesn't respect yeah. him for not taking the fight. I mean, your mouth sometimes gets you in trouble. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes there's those, there, there's those situations where you're like, oh, I could probably, you, you know, guys do it a lot. Like, I can get some free publicity here. Well, I'll just be like, oh, I'll fight him. I'll do it. And they never call. You know what I mean? Like, they tweet it. The UFC never calls and offers it. You look like you're a badass. You take a fight on short notice, and then they never call. So there's no risk. But sometimes they'll call. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. When I... <laughs> When Chris uh, uh, Weidman got injured and he was supposed to fight Rockhold at UFC 199, right? I, mm -hmm. I threw my name in the mix. I had been near a gym for months, right? And I thought, I'm not going to get the title fight. 
but I'll probably get some good graces from the UFC and it'll help me get a title fight eventually. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I did not think for one second I was getting that fight. Dana even said, we love you, Mike. Jack Array is our first option, but if he doesn't take it, we'll give you a call. I'm like, well, there's no way Jack Array doesn't take that fight. So I went out that night, got good old fashioned shit faced. And then in the morning when I'm hung over like a motherfucker, I find out I'm fighting for the world championship. I'm like, oh my God, I've already, I've already got only two weeks. I definitely would not have got on the piss if I'd have known that I was fighting for a world title fight. But still, there mm-hmm. you go. See? Um, yeah. But you took it. But I See? took it because I thought the difference. I, I had to. If, <laughs> had you not have, had you not have, that'd have been a mess. Well, yeah, because Dana announced it on Sports Center without talking to me. I would have <laughs> would have been a bit of an ish. Do you know what I yeah. mean? A little bit of an yeah. ish. All right then, Brian. Questions. What we got, bud? We got some questions here. Uh, I got a question here from a Mr. Keith Hart, and he's touching on something you guys were talking about earlier. All right. Mm -hmm. What up, guys? This question is for Mike and Anthony. I'm a big fan of the show, big fan of you guys. I wanted to get y'all's opinion on older amateur fighters. I myself am 35 years old, and I currently compete in amateur MMA. I have seven fights. I plan on competing a lot this year. I grew up playing team sports like baseball, basketball, football. So I didn't find out I had a real passion for mixed martial arts till later in life. Uh, going to jujitsu gym at 28 years old, um, fell in love with it, and I really love competing. I don't plan on making a career out of fighting. I have a salary paid job to support my family. The problem is I do get really self-conscious about fighting younger guys in their early 20s. So I just wanted to know what you guys think. Thanks and have a good day. First of all, let's talk about those neck tattoos. Yeah. I mean, that, that, I mean he, he rocks it. He looks good. I they you look know what fucking I mean? cool. <laughs> it looked cool as fuck on him. And maybe it's the blue yeah. shirt he's wearing or whatever. But Anthony, have you ever been uh, attempted to get a full on neck tattoo? Yeah. My wife always tells me she'd leave me. So <laughs> I, he said, my, you have I got tattoos enough. though, right? Do what? You have tattoos, though. Oh, yeah, shit ton. But oh, of neck. course, yeah, look at your hands. Look yeah. at your hands. My God. Yeah, she Tell said us the about hands the hand are okay. Tattoos. Man, I was like 18 when I got both of them. Show was, the hands. Come on, give me one of those. A, there we go. I mean, look at that. Yeah. I, I, that's a straight-up thug. Mm -hmm. You know, when you yeah. walk in, when you walk in with those ta tattoos, and, you know, you're like, oh, God, guys. You're like, oh. Grab the shotgun. We've got an <laughs> issue. We've got a fucking got psychopath. Well, you're one of the most level-headed guys. Uh, go on, answer his question. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't know what he means by self-conscious. If he just gets, you know, these guys are younger, faster, stronger, or maybe they've been doing it longer because he came around late in life. But um, 35 is not that old. I, maybe to start an amateur career, be short into an amateur career. But I, I don't see any reason to go in pro if you don't have any reason to. <laughs> it's all about what your goals are. If you're your goal is to go pro and you know have four or five fights then you know maybe you're at that point where it's maybe it's about time i guess i don't know how how high of a level fights you're in but um there's no career aspirations and you're doing it for fun i don't see any problem with it just keep on doing your thing brother yeah exactly couldn't have said it better myself you know at the end of the day when you're fighting amateur you're doing it as a hobbyist you're doing it for fun you're doing it for enjoyment and if you get enjoyment and you get fun out of it, and if you do have a few days where there's a little, little anxiety or nerves and things like that, it's that will help you as well because you're going to have to overcome those feelings. So that will be a personal triumph, you know, overcoming that, overcoming those nerves because it is nerve-wracking. Yes, we walk into an octagon, I used to, but still just stepping onto a mat, you know, with a bunch of people watching or a ring or whatever it is, whatever the environment is, and going one-on-one. -on -one, it, it gets the butterflies going in the stomach. It gets you overthinking everything. Like Lucas, we just recently started taking him kickboxing. And, uh, you know, I was so proud of him, just walking into a whole new environment. And he's never done kickboxing, you know, and getting down with them all. I'm like, that took balls to do that. Anytime you do something mm -hmm. new. So it, it's uh, w whatever you're doing, mate, continue doing it. If you want to turn pro, fuck it, why not? Why not? 30, if you feel like you can do it, do it, you know? But you got to be honest with yourself. Some people aren't. Some people are delusional. But you fucking, he's got the neck tattoos, man. He can yeah. do this. He's Mike okay, Perry okay. 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's Mike Perry with a job. 
My oh god, my, my, my Perry with a job. real job. There we well, go. I'm in a All real right. job, like a salary job. <laughs> my, <laughs> Perry, my Perry was in the was in Dana's section at the uh, pay per view. Was he really? Oh, that's yeah, nice. It was, that's yeah, it was cool to see him. Yeah, it was cool to yeah. see him. Yeah. You know, Mike was going to come on the show. We'll hit him up again. I like Mike. He's all right. He's out of his mind. Absolutely. In a good way. In a good way. I, I unapologetically I, himself. Correct. Correct. And you have to respect that. I used to mm -hmm. see him on the road now and again, you know, when I was, uh, you know, before COVID and uh, always had fun little interactions. You know, always had a funny little story. So he's a good dude. Uh, Brian, what else we got? We got a question here from a Mr. Adam Z Z Z Zwayek. I'm bad at uh, whatever Slavic Ad last names. Adam Hi, Zwayek. I'm taking my question. My name's Adam. I uh, share a city with Anthony. I'm from Omaha. And oh. saw Anthony a couple of years ago. Ran into him at a, a mini golf place. Uh, just said hi in passing, let him do his thing with his family. And then last week or a week and a half ago, saw him again at a bowling alley, enjoying some time. And it just made me think of an interesting question. You know, as fans, we we want to approach and say, hey, can I get a photo? Can I do this? Can, can you sign that or what, what have you? But as a decent human being, you want to let those people enjoy their real lives with their families. So my question is, do you guys have any good stories of a time where you maybe had to tell someone to step off a little bit. Maybe they were a little overexcited, a little too anxious to meet you guys. Uh, and that's questions for any of the celebrities, Anthony, Mike, Harrington. I know that happens to you all the time. So, <laughs> thanks so much. Love the show. Uh, Adam, thank you very much. And by the way, bympod at gmail.com if you want to send it in. We do like the content. Please try and be creative. Try and be funny. Try and think of original questions. But please don't be shy. We all have a phone. Pick up the phone, turn the camera on and record a question, send it in, and we'll answer it. Uh, Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, well, what a cool dude, you know, right here in Omaha. Um, and that's super respectful and cool of him to, you know, see me twice out with my family and not say anything. But uh, next time, absolutely come and say hi. It doesn't, mm. doesn't bother me too much, uh, especially if they're just quick interactions. And that's how it is most of the time. I, I've been, you hear a lot of guys that get real upset about it or whatever. I have been... Maybe it's me and maybe, you know, maybe the people that follow my journey or whatever, a little bit different, but everyone for the most part, is super respectful. They're quick highs and buys. Can I get a picture? Uh, and they go on their way. It's not a big deal, but every once in a while, um, I actually have a funny story from this weekend. Go ahead. We go to the, as soon as we're done, we go to that little center bar in the park MGM kind of where all yep. the, a lot of ESPN people hang out at. I was going to go, but I went home to bed like a good boy. I was invited yeah, by should've. Charlie. I was yeah. going to. I, I said I was going to. I said I'll be there in 45 minutes. Yeah. Didn't go. Didn't go. All right. Well, I, I was that guy. So I went and Bisbing ditched us. And there's this guy, and, and it, he wasn't American. Um, I, I, don't, I didn't recognize his accent, partially because he was so goddamn hammered. He was annihilated. But I'm standing there. It's me. I'm standing next to Brett Okamoto mm -hmm. and um, Oscar, the Mac Life guy. Uh, little, little. Yeah, guy. He, uh, I know him. I'm just chit chatting with them, and this guy walks up, and he just absolutely loses his shit when he sees Brett Okamoto. He just he, he's there for the fights. He recognizes Brett. <laughs> of all the people, of all the you know, there's Anthony mm -hmm. Smith, there's Chael Sonnen, there's Valentina <laughs> Shevchenko. What the fuck, Brett Okamoto, ESPN's yeah. very own and finest. He he lost his mind. He was just he was losing it, and then he sees Oscar. And he's just, he's going, <gasps> he can't believe it. He's like, you're the Mac life guy. And he's just going nuts. And then I love sees, journalists. Right, he didn't even notice I was standing there. So then he looks up and he sees me and I thought he was going to fucking pass out. I mean, he, uh, he like couldn't breathe and he, all he wanted to do was buy me, buy a shots. And I was like, you don't need any more shots. And so uh, long story short, I did a shot with him, but then he, yeah. I think that shot kicked in and he just, he got a little. I, I I bet he felt like shit the next day, but he he got a little too drunk, and he was kind of lingering and and mm. just he just would look over at us every two minutes and the I can't believe this is real life and he'd like poke me and be like you are real <laughs> you know like, he was just annihilated but anyways yeah. for the most part everyone's really it, respectful I don't mind them coming up saying hi and and getting a, grabbing a picture or whatever I don't mind it's though. always nice it's always nice mm -hmm. to be appreciated appreciated part of me because people always say to me does that not bother you I'm like no don't be silly now yeah. 
Granted, sometimes it does. Do you know what I mean? And there are times when you're having a bad day. You know, not every day. You know, normally I'm happy go lucky and I'm pretty good, but sometimes some shit's going on. Maybe you've had a stupid argument with your wife over something stupid. You know what I mean? And and I'm in a bad mood. Like that happened kind of recently. Right? And we don't stu- we don't argue a lot. We have a great relationship, but you know, 23 years together. You know, <laughs> we've had a few fucking arguments. Go figure. And uh, just recently. Uh, you know, living in Anaheim Hills, there's not many places to go. And I was so bad. I say, I'm storming out the bloody house. And I go, I get out of the house and I get in the car and I'm like, where am I going to go? Do you know what I mean? I can't go yeah. back in because I look like an asshole, but I'm like, there's not even like a pub, you know, even if there was a pub, I can't go in there because I'm going to get hassled. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm in a bad mood. I'm stressed out. I'm with texting right. by argument. You know what I mean? I don't I want her to do is say, come home. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, well, that's it. I'm leaving. And then, and then I was I was sitting at this bar. I went to BJ's, which is like a family restaurant, which is the last place you want to be when you have an argument with your wife mm-hmm. and you're in a bad mood because everyone's happy and looking. It's all families and stuff. And I'm sitting at the bar, and a guy comes over, and I was like, ah! you know, I fucking snapped at him. He said, "Oh, I don't want to bother you." And then here, yeah, here's what he said. He said, "Hey, hey, Mike Bisbee, I don't want to bother you." I said, "Yeah, well, you fucking are." <laughs> you know, what I, <laughs> I said, "You fucking are." You know, I, but then I always feel bad because I'm like, then I went over. I said, look, listen, I'm sorry, dude. I said, I'm, I'm having an argument with my wife. I'm having a bad day. I always stop and do pictures. It's lovely. It's very nice mm-hmm. after all these years. People still give a shit. But yeah. maybe on the rare occasion, I, I've, I've been a little prick. Going through the airport is a good one. You're running late for a flight. I've had that so, yeah. so many times. I was late. I'm literally running to the gate. Yo, Bisbee, can I get a picture? I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Like, you're a fucking asshole. I'm like, I'm a fucking asshole, which is weird because I wouldn't stop because I wanted to miss my flight. But the weird shit that goes on in my brain when he calls me an asshole, I'm like, fuck the flight. I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, I'm an asshole. Now you want to go? Now you want to go fight I, about it? I don't. I don't want to fight him, but I just want to explain. Yeah. I said, dude, I'm late for a flight. I'm sorry, you're a total stranger. Sorry if I'm not going to stop and miss a fucking flight. What the right. fuck? Now I'm going to miss my flight. Anyway, so we're gonna end the show, Anthony, on. <laughs> A little more Teddy Atlas because I like doing it <laughs> earlier. Listen, everyone, if you want to send in your questions, pod at gmail.com. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, great show, as always, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. Anthony, anything to say to sign off to the ladies and gentlemen? No, no, I'm ready to, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'll see you guys in London. <laughs> Ooh, oh, wouldn't that be cool? Are you coming? Are you going to UFC London? No, you just got me a gig book. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, don't check on your passport details just yet. We're gonna get a okay. response. Fingers crossed. Right. Fingers crossed. We'll make it happen. Perfect. All right, that's the show. Enjoy yourselves. Take care.